Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. It's March 4th. I can't believe it's March. We are on day eight of jury duty of the state of New Mexico versus Hannah Gutierrez. She is the armor in the movie Rust or was the armor in the movie Rust. The movie where Alec Baldwin had a loaded gun that she loaded um, and pointed it and fired it at cinematographer Alana Hutchins, fatally killing her or fatally shooting and killing her. The uh, state should be wrapping up their testimony today. That's really what I'm anticipating today in trial is that we get to the end of the state's case. And I very much hope that with um, with that, we see the last few witnesses. The state hasn't proven anything about this tampering with evidence case. So I don't even know what is happening with that, but we will see. So. The state has some things left to prove. The witness I am most anticipating is um, Seth Kinney, the owner of PDQ Arm and Prop. So let's go to court. Yes, uh, my voice is a little rough. I've been traveling. I'm traveling into desert environments, which never does well with me uh, and my voice. And I was also traveling to, you know, I, I, you guys might not know this, but I Moonlight is a backup dancer for the Dave Matthews Band and a backup singer for the Dave Matthews Band. They don't know that, but um, that is that is my role, and I can't, I cannot contain myself. But it's mostly the dry air that's getting me. So, thank you all. We'll be back to our normal selves and back in Middle Tennessee soon. Let's roll on. It's good to see you. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, friends, we are going to rejoin court. Court has just begun for the morning. I, of course, have this on 1.25 until we get to, oh, let me gain up the audio just a little bit. I have this on 1.25 until we get to um, later on in court proceedings when there's something that we really need to make sure that we are not missing so that we can keep zooming along and miss some of the breaks because every time they go to a sidebar, it takes forever. Call your next witness. State calls Carol. I missed the last part. Um, I'm drinking hot water this morning until I get some Starbucks. So you guys let me know what you're drinking. I'm going to try to answer questions in the chat, not always with my voice. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Good to see you guys. Right, we had some the microphone. Thank you. travel craziness this week, too. So it's just been. Now, state your full name for the record. Uh, Karen Ann Kuhn. And Karen. K-U-E-H-N. How are you Kuhn. employed? I am a stills photographer on uh, film sets and uh, sometimes a wrangler. Uh, what does a stills photographer do on film sets? We document scenes, uh, behind the scenes, and do gallery work and specials for billboards, posters, whatever the, whatever the production needs. Okay. Uh, were you yeah, the audio does not sound good. It does sound like mono. On set of rust. Yes. And if you recall, can, can you estimate for us approximately how many photographs you took uh, during the the time that you were working on rest, do you have any idea? Um, maybe nine nine thousand. Okay, <laughs> about lot. two thousand a day at the most, probably. Okay. Um, I am going to. Well, before you came in today, did you uh, did you have an opportunity to to review one of the photographs? I'm curious what the stills photographer. Okay. Um, I am going um, to what the stills photographer is admitting. States exhibit one sixty five. I believe there's no objection. The court audio is on mono. Right. We're going to look for another feed. Publish. The hard part with the court audio, you guys, is it all comes from one source. Yes. So all the feeds grab from one. I've got court audio mono too. It's off. So if you all have one earbud in, that's why you might not be able to hear court audio. Um, I've only got court audio in one in ear too. We'll look for some other options. I try to stick with this feed when I can because their audio has been better and they have had closed captions. But if we can't do that, we'll switch. Um, I can, we'll switch feeds if we need to. These guys will take care of it. I'm not. I never do. Look at that. Um, yes. Technical difficulties. Put that on your bingo card. Do you this Mine photo? and theirs. I do. Um, can you tell us the date that this photo was taken? I believe it was on the 15th. What month? 
October. And would that have been 2021? Yes. Um, and the defense could have objected to all of that, and they're not. They're just trying to get these photos here? in. Yes, that's Hannah. Okay. And who's this person here? Alec. And why were you taking this photo? I just shoot a lot, and I think the behind the scenes is really interesting, what's going on. So they're having a conversation about what's about to happen. And um, Okay. So, um, do you know what this is in Ms. Gutierrez's hand? It looks like the gun belt. I'm guessing, I'm guessing for Alec okay. or a bandolier, one of those. Okay. I see a gun in it. All right. I'm going to zoom in on this photo. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, when you look at... I well, think they're trying to establish uh, that what was in, in the belt. gun belt was the same. And we've already established like four times and, what's uh, in the gun, gun belt. And do you notice anything about the center primers of the ammunition that's in that belt? One is silver and quite different from the other three, four. All right. And that okay. was October 15th, you said, is that correct? I imagine yes, this will be a quick witness. I'll pass the witness. <laughs> she wanted that one photo in. Why even cross-examine this witness? Can I leave this here? Yeah. You can just Other than, are you sure that was the date? On it if you want. Thank you. I mean... Good morning, Ms. Kuhn. Good morning. I'll be right back. My glasses uh, are smoochy. Is it true that you were budgeted for five days of work for the entire show? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and were you ever tasked with taking any pictures of guns pointing into the camera? Yes. Ah. Who made you take pictures of guns pointing into the camera? One of the junior producers, Ryan Smith, emphasized that I should get as many shots of guns pointed into the camera as possible. Okay, so so then you were told to do this on many occasions? Um, That's why they're cross-examining this witness. Uh, when, when those photos are taken of guns pointing into the camera, are they, are they actually pointed at you, directly at you then? Um, when it's the gallery shoot, yes, and those guns have to be checked by the armor before, which I trusted was happening because she was nearby. Fair statement. Uh, when filming uh, in New Mexico, uh, did it appear to you that Alec Baldwin was the boss? Yes. Did you ever see anybody Shocking. tell Alec Baldwin no? Shocking testimony. No. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, and in terms of the structure, did it appear that other producers were below him? Yes. Did you see Baldwin's other producers lawyers on are like, set frequently? Can yes. you leave us alone? Uh, Baldwin's not on trial. Did you see other producers on set? Pretty much every day I was there. Were the other producers sometimes even in some of the photos that you were taking? Yes. You had to Photoshop them out? No, I don't do Photoshop. Okay. Uh, what about Gabrielle Pickle? Um, was, what was your, did it appear to you like, well first, did you have interactions with Gabrielle Pickle? Very little, just the initial deal. Uh, did it appear to you um, in your perception that, that the budget was a major concern to Gabrielle Pickle? That's her job. She's the line producer, I believe. And so she has to come in according to whatever the budget is. Okay. Do you recall believing that she was trying to be cheap, to cheap everybody down? <laughs> On the um, lower tier, lower budget shows, that's what they all do. I was shocked. And, and that's what you observed from Gabrielle Pickle in this show? I didn't get involved with her about everybody else's deal, just my deal. And I just made a deal with her and, and that was it. Ma'am, was okay, production but, being um, cheap? I'm trying to get yes, your perception okay. of her and whether, in fact, uh, I'm not sure if you're quite answering. Did you did you believe that she was cheap, cheap, cheap? I don't have an opinion. Uh, do you remember testifying or state, making statements about your opinion of her previously, where you said she was cheap? Just impeach her well, with what she said. That was the nature of the show. It was a low budget tier. Okay, and, and I'm not asking about that. I'm asking about your opinion about Gabrielle Pickle and whether you once believed she was cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, I don't You're recall so if like I said P that, P then P I said that. Counsel. Would it refresh your memory to look at a transcript of your pretrial interview in this case? If I said it, then okay. I, I said it. I mean, that was the, the overall feeling with everybody. Everybody's always trying to get more money. That's just the way it goes. Okay. She's like, yeah, I said uh, Were you actually the in the church at the time of the shooting incident in this case? I was. Wait, what? And do you recall ever seeing uh, Hannah Gutierrez in the church at that time? I they made room for the still photographer in the church, but not the armor. Everyone was inside this freaking church when this happened, except the one person that needed to be there, the armorer. Again, the defense is like Baldwin's fault, Baldwin's fault, Baldwin's fault. I'm sure Baldwin's lawyers are thrilled watching this trial, but ultimately she, 
if she's the one who loaded the weapon, it can be both of their faults. Um, but I don't think this woman remembers saying, yes, the line producer was being cheap, 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 other than saying this was a low budget film. Everyone was being cheap and everyone was fighting over money. And she was probably fighting over her contract for how much she was going to get paid for still photography. Oh boy. I do not. I saw her outside. Would you agree with me that after lunch, right before the shooting, everybody on set was rushing to get the set all up and going? I would agree with that. I don't believe I have any other questions for you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Excuse <coughs> me. Um, Ms. Kuhn, I want to ask you a couple questions about um, taking photos of guns pointed at the camera. Um, I would love to hear more about you... what she has to say about that thought that Ms. Gutierrez had checked the gun. I believed so. Um, let me ask you, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, check the gun in your presence? Not that I recall. Um, and how many movie sets do you think you've worked on that had armorers? Over a dozen. Um, in your experience, does the armor generally check the gun in the actor's presence or the assistant director's presence? Yes. Uh, did that happen in this case? I didn't see that. I also came into the church a little bit later. And I'm not talking about inside the church. I'm talking about with you when, when you were taking those photos. Right. I, I just don't recall. I wasn't paying attention to that. I was paying attention to just documenting. What okay. Was going on. Well, um, she was trying to take pictures. Would you recall if Ms. Gutierrez showed you the dummy rounds and shook them for you when she put yes, them in the gun? I would recall that, but I don't. Okay. Uh, so is it your testimony that that did not happen? I don't know. I don't know if she checked them. It's not my job. She didn't check them in front of you? No. Okay, understood. Um, Ask <clears throat> the direct was question Ms. Gutierrez present and move on. Uh, for those close-up shots of, uh, of guns pointed at the camera? She was nearby. Uh, we were in a very small space outside of a barn uh, for a gallery shoot, and I asked her to check everything, and I trusted that she did that, and I was inside and working with the with the uh, talent on those days. And that, um, that space is probably 20 by 30. Very small, you can't have a lot of people in there. Okay. Um, you were asked some questions about Ms. Pickle and the, uh, the budget. Mm -hmm. um, do you generally work on movies uh, in the state of New Mexico? Yes. Uh, you live in New Mexico, right? Yes. And, and are a lot of films that are made in New Mexico low budget movies? It's a mix. It's a mix. Okay. Uh, do you have any, any knowledge about um, New Mexico tax incentives um, and how, she, how that happens with regard to different Ma'am, she's a fucking photographer. Movies? Not enough to talk about, but okay. I know they get a discount if they hire our local crew, which we appreciate. Okay, of course. Understood. Um, on October 21st, 2021, uh, when you were um, inside the church, and I'm talking... I really am tired of this style of questioning. I realize it's the DA's style and it's just a matter of personal preference, but she doesn't ask any of these questions on direct and then waits for redirect. And if there's anything stunning that comes out of redirect, the court will let the defense do recross. There's no like gotcha moment. This is so, so frustrating. And just none of this is needed at this point. Talking about shortly before um, the incident where Ms. Hutchins was shot, uh, were you paying close attention to Ms. Gutierrez and what she was doing? No, I was paying attention to Alec because he was handling a gun. As and I was taking the church, pictures thought, of him. Oh, there's some shots happening, photographs. So I kind of went right in to get some photos of him. And then he pointed at me to get out of the way um, and out of his personal space. Okay. Uh, was um, he pleasant when he said that? Can we ask the follow-up question? Let's ask the follow-up question. I don't have anything else. Thank you. Ma'am. All right. Thank you. You're excused. Ma'am, what is the follow-up question? State calls Marissa Popple. All right, state is calling back witness Marissa Popple, and I am going to try real quick to switch um, feeds. We're getting mono audio out of court today for the first time in eight days. Uh, streaming is dynamic and an adventure, so thank you to all of you with the helpful suggestions. To those that complained, I'm sure you've already found another feed. Thank you so much for finding another feed. When the court um, mono audios, there's not much we can do except hope that someone else has boosted it so 
we're gonna switch back to Popple. This is gonna be more photos. This is one of the initial officers that responded on scene. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at 1.25. So let's switch back to there. All right, heading back to court to the uh, spinning wheels of death. That's a, that's a delight for me. It's a delight. So you guys, we're, uh, here's the thing. We've switched feeds to get better audio. <laughs> and the feed is like, I hate you. So I don't know why they're recalling this witness now. I don't know why we haven't heard from Seth Kinney yet, but I imagine this will be the last one uh, before Seth Kinney. But uh, let's see. It's going to take me a minute to make this to make this work so we don't miss this witness. Uh, so y'all are just going to have to give me a second. And then we're not switching feeds again. Because <laughs> clearly this feed does not want to be switched. This looks like a pretty short direct examination. Um, and there um, we go. Popple is back I on the like stand. to show you uh, a series of photographs. Uh, and I believe there is no objection to these photos. This is Popple at 1.25 speed. And the photos are going to be 166 through 173. So there are photos that they did not get in. Uh, you're admitted you may publish. That's okay. much better. There are photos they didn't get in. This is a uh, law Ms. enforcement Popple, do you witness. See that photograph there that's on your screen and I'm showing you States Exhibit 166? Yes, I do. What is that a photo of? This is a photo of dummy rounds that were removed from a box that was located in the prop truck and then they were laid out on brown paper and rephotographed. And I'm going to show you what's already been admitted as States Exhibit 48A. I'm glad we're all happier that? with the audio. Yes. Yeah. What is that and how does it relate to the photo that we just looked at? These are those same rounds while they were still in the foam insert. And are these the rounds that came out of the box that had the blue Sharpie writing on the, on the label? Yes. I do too. I just... I just showing want to get you to what's been marked as well. States Exhibit 167. Uh, well, can you tell us what we're looking at here? Yes, this is a box of uh, live rounds that were collected from PDQ. Photos and the prosecution should have put in. Is one of them dissimilar than the others? The last time they called this yes, witness. Yes, in the bottom corner, one of them has a silver primer. This is leading. They should have gotten these photos in with this witness. Sometimes it happens that when a witness testifies, you forget to answer, ask them things, and they have to come back in. Sometimes you forget sometimes it's just that it doesn't seem like you need it and then you get longer in trial and you do need it so they are cleaning some stuff up hopefully this is faster uh Can you talk about this one over here yes was that the only live round with a silver primer that you found at pdq no That's a delight. relates to the previous photo, That's this one here, 167. What's 168? These are those same rounds removed from the box and laid out. Do you know which of these uh, has the silver primer? Uh, it would be one of the rounds that's by itself. One of these over here? Yes. Okay. Um, and in terms of uh, the shape of the projectile, is the shape of the projectile similar to the live rounds that were found on the set of rust. One of these no. looks real wonky. Um, is the head stamp one of, the, of, one of those, excuse of me. the round. One of those looks uh, real fact, wonky. Let's move to uh, States Exhibit 169. Is that a close up of that live round? Yes. Uh, is the head stamp uh, of this live round the same as the head stamp of the live rounds from the set of rust? No. That's what they were saying. States Exhibit 170, what are we looking at here? These were additional rounds that were located at PDQ that had silver and color primers. And um, are the head stamps the same as the as the live rounds found on the set of rust? No. One states exhibit one seventy one. What's this? This is a top view of those uh, same live rounds located at PDQ with the silver primer. Um, is the projectile shape uh, the same as the live rounds that were found on the set of rust? No. The live rounds with silver primers that came from PDQ, how many did you find? Uh, there were, I'm sorry, say that one more time. How many live rounds at PDQ with silver primers did you discover and photograph? Ten. Ten out of all of them? Yes. Okay. And have we looked at... Ten live rounds from PDQ arm and prop 
with the silver primer. It seems that she's going to have to clear up which one had the different uh, gunpowders with this. All of them this morning? Yes. States Exhibit 172, what is this? This is the outside uh, of an ammunition box that was located in Lieutenant Benavidez, Benavidez's vehicle. And based on your uh, experience in this case, uh, do you know what kind of ammunition that box uh, contained? Uh, this contained blank rounds. Okay. And the, the problem with PDQ arm and prop is that the live rounds are covered from PDQ and the live rounds recovered on set have different gunpowder. And so the state is arguing that the live rounds on set did not come from PDQ because they have different gunpowder. Remember the hockey pucks versus the little shoot loop ones? So the prosecution's trying to say that Hannah must have brought the live rounds and that shows she was further reckless. So we will continue on, but there were live rounds recovered from PDQ as well. States exhibit 173, what is this? This is the outside of an ammunition box that was located on top of the cart. And what kind of ammunition was inside this box? There were blanks inside this box. I'm going to show you what is previously entered into evidence as States Exhibit 4. Do you recognize that? Yes. Um, the box that we just looked at, can you tell us where it is on the cart? Yes, it's off to the side. This is the best, this is the best is this one right here? photo yes, we've seen of the cart. Hold okay. on. I'm gonna, All right, thank you. Wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause it. Hold on. What just happened? I'll pass the witness. Wait, I wanted to see that picture of the cart again because I was in the way. All right, hold on. Let me make, and Smolin. So they're talking about where the um, box was on this cart. This is the best photo we've gotten of the cart so far. So I wanted to back up to take a look at that real quick because I was, Do you my recognize face was that? in the way. Yes. Um, the box that we just looked at, can you tell us where it is on the cart? Yes, it's off to the side. Is it this one right here? Yes, where your cursor is. Okay, all right, thank you. So it's not on the cart. It's all the way off and to the side of the cart. It took me a minute to see that. Yeah. Okay. I'll pass the witness. She's like, okay. All right, Mr. Bowles. Cross exam. He wanted to admit some pictures with this witness too. Do you remember when he's like, I want to put this picture in and the cross and the prosecution's like, we've already called her. You can recall her if you want to. So now the defense is going to get all those pictures in with this witness that they wanted to get in a while ago. So yes, I see some of you saying that could have been any box. These are all pretty well documented where they came from on set um, because that one was handed to the officer on body cam. So... While they argue about photos, we're going to so zoom, zoom. you testified earlier. Good morning again. Good morning. Ms. Popel, so you testified earlier you all found 10 live rounds, and that was in the search that occurred approximately one month after the shooting. Is that right? Yes. One month so after the again, shooting no is when PDQ was searched. In the month in which went by that you all weren't there to search, right? Correct. Correct. Now, State's Exhibit 4, you testified at the end. Uh, you looked at that exhibit and told the jury where that box was on the card. Do you recall that? Yes. Now, it's also been your prior testimony, is it not, that you put that box back in the card from Benavides' vehicle, is that right? No. Okay, uh, was that box there before? Yes. Okay. So that wasn't one of the two boxes that were removed from Benavides' vehicle and put back on? Correct, those were placed in a brown paper bag and secured in the scene. Okay. Your Honor, if I may approach to show some exhibit. And these are new photos, but again, they're saying that the officers put the rounds or put the ammo boxes back on the cart to photograph them, and that's not where they came from. Yes, I recognize it. Did you, I'm sorry, did you take that photograph? Yes, they did. Okay, you're gonna move the fitness cue into evidence? No objection, no objection to any of these. All right, Thank you, Counsel So, Then I will move in, Your Honor, the fitness R through D, D as well. R through what? D, D is in David. It goes all the way through R through Z. And then A, A, B, B, C, C, and D, D. Oh, they're double number. D, D. So, Q through Z, and then A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Yes, Your Honor. All right. They're admitted. You may publish. So, these are the photos the defense wanted to get into with a different witness, and the prosecution was like, no, that's from Popple, and you can recall Popple if you want to. Popple's here. There we go. 
once the technology works. Should they go A, 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 B, A, C? I have no idea. They didn't. Each court's gonna do their own thing. Good morning, law nerds. Well, they're getting their tech up and rolling, uh, which I am empathetic to. I'm gonna just say hello to all of you with your member chats. Good to see you. It's been an adventure of a weekend. I'm traveling later today, so we will have uh, Emily in the chat mm -hmm. First up, yeah, later today for a stream. I want to show you the way I'm it. so worried that Seth Kenny is oh, going to yeah. be on the stand while I'm on an airplane. Ms. Popple, the defendant's Q. Can you tell the jury what, what that photograph is? This was a photo of dummy ammunition that was located at PDQ. Now, when you say it was at dummy PDQ. ammunition, did you send these to the FBI lab? No, we did not. And did you actually uh, seize those and take them to the sheriff's office? No. So you took a picture and you uh, concluded they were dummies without getting lab confirmation. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I want to show you She's next defendant's S. And it's, what is that picture? Um, I believe this was a, I'm sorry. Um, I believe this was a box of, uh, you know what, I, I can't determine it out of context, I apologize. <laughs> okay, um, but this was something you took at PDQ Props? I, I couldn't determine it out of context, I apologize. Okay. It's okay. I have over 2,000 photographs, sure. mostly of ammunition, so. Uh, She's like, I need team. more info. Can you tell the jury what that is? Uh, this was the outside of the box where live rounds were located at PDQ. I can't summarize the PDQ w testimony yet until we're done with this, because PDQ arm and prop is uh, going to testify later. Could you turn the photo? Sure. Yeah, that'd be easier. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it would be easier uh, to not look this at it sideways. Were, uh, this was boxes of ammunition that were located at PDQ. Hey, oh yeah, PDQ so was chaos. This was another photograph taken at PDQ. Good PQ. God. Did you, uh, is this in the state it was in when you, obviously when you got there for the search? Yes. What are those um, items what? in the back? They're yellow and green. Uh, you see at the very top right. What are those things? Uh, I'm not sure, some form of tool. Did you inspect that tool at no. all to find out what it was? I believe that uh, Sergeant Zook assisted with that aspect. She's like, no. You, were there any? I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Were there any um, rounds in this picture? That picture's a nightmare. It looks um, like a freaking look well, up, where's my Waldo page. Has lettering underneath it. Sure, yeah. Um, it, there were uh, rounds on the table, yes. It, it is so a there, where's there Waldo is, nightmare. Um, and just to describe, there's rounds laying in a mix. You're of, testifying. Uh, all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what to call it. Is that clutter? Would that be a good word? There mm. were a large amount of items on the table. Okay. What is yeah, the it does green look like a nice buy book. What are those? I don't recall what the green cans were. Okay. And, and what is that brown canister in the middle? Or whatever that is? A box? Ask Seth Kinney. Seth Kinney's going to testify. Be like, is this how you keep your shop? This officer's like, I don't know. I was just photographing it. Remember, PDQ is the arm and prop house that supplied the guns and some of the dummy and blank rounds to the set. This is what the prop house looked like a month after the shooting when they finally went to do a search warrant there. All of the photos we have seen in the civil lawsuits look like this photo. It is a mess. I hate it the most. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Okay, I should point this thing right here. Uh, the black box that's there, I don't recall what it was. Did you all uh, pick up these and look under them? Pick up the clutter and look under it? Yes, items were moved. Okay. So if you found anything under it, can you tell us what that was? Uh, nothing that, uh, nothing located underneath it was collected by us. Okay. Um, what are those manuals in the, the top right? You're assuming you they're manuals, counsel. I don't recall what those manuals were. That's not laying foundation. Why isn't Did anyone you, objecting? Um, determine I haven't whether had there was any either, equipment counsel, or other tools within the PDQ It's not my trial. If there were tools? Uh, equipment. First of all, like that is a machines. shit show. Uh, I don't recall there being machines. I mean, there were some miscellaneous tools. Okay. Do you know what a reloading machine is? I know what it is, yes. 
they're trying to get to the point that PDQ could have reloaded some of the rounds into live rounds. Here's the thing. Uh, for the sake of argument, Seth Kinney and PDQ Arm and Prop may absolutely suck. He may have mixed in live rounds with dummy rounds. That may have been absolutely negligent. This is all speculation because he has an immunity deal, it seems, and has not been charged. But even if he did all of that and should have been charged, if Hannah had checked the rounds, she would have caught the mix up if there was ammo mixed in, if she wasn't negligent. So it's like, well, if Seth Kinney had done this, then then this, if Seth Kinney had or hadn't done something, then this wouldn't have happened. No, it could be Seth Kinney fucked up and Hannah fucked up and Dave Hall's fucked up and Alec Baldwin fucked up. All of them can still be criminally charged if they're not given a deal by the prosecution. So Seth Kinney fucking up doesn't matter. I am assuming at this point Kinney has an immunity deal because we saw that with Sarah Zachary. I'm assuming that's what's going to happen when he testifies later. I don't know if he would testify without it. I'm going to show you the defendants of you. Again, I'm going to show you that those items I was talking about, the yellow and green, and seeing those closer, does that refresh your memory as to whether you might have seen what those were? Uh, it she does didn't not, say I, she I forgot. I those items personally. You can't refresh someone's recollection on something they didn't forgot. forget. She said she didn't know what it was. She said she didn't inspect them. She said another officer inspected it. Somebody should be objecting. God, I'm spicy this morning. Sorry, y'all, I'm tired. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you again, defendants W, do you remember seeing on any of these boxes that you uh, looked through or inspected the JS initials? Um, yes, multiple boxes had JS initials. I'm going to show you defendants V. Uh, Ma'am, what is this picture that we're looking at? Um, I don't recall uh, exactly where this picture originated from. I'm going to show you defendants X. Um, can you tell the jury what this picture is? These are more uh, ammo boxes that were located Look, at PDQ. Look, more ammo. Do witnesses have to disclose if they have an immunity deal? The immunity deal has to be disclosed by the prosecution to the defense. And then someone's going to ask the witness about it no matter what. So it'll come up. Now, did you find any uh, written inventory system uh, in the paperwork that you might have inspected at the search? I did not myself, no. Did you no inventory system, there was huh? any computerized inventory system that kind of cataloged where things were? Ask that Seth Kinney. Don't worry, coffee's on the way. I'm going to show you defendants V. The prosecution is arguing uh, the rounds did not come from Seth Kinney because the v, live rounds the what that is? found at his prop house. ammunition boxes located at PDQ. Had different Were you able to ascertain powder. any type of system um, just staring at everything as to how these were arranged? Uh, they seem to be arranged by ammo type. And were they all she, kind of put in together? Did you ever see bags of rounds put in by boxes? Uh, I don't recall. I'm going to show you defendants AA. Does that appear to be bags of rounds by boxes? A month yes. to get to the prop house. So again, that was um, how it, it was when you took this picture at the search, correct? Yes. Okay. Then I have, uh, let me see, Judge, just one second. So for those of you asking why it took so long to search PDQ Arm and Prop, I have no idea. Nobody's asked any of these witnesses. Why it took a month to go to the prop house, I don't know why it took so long. Truly don't. It's odd to me. <clears throat> Ms. Poppel, when you were at uh, PDQ, you were there pursuant to a, a search warrant, is that right? DMB yes. plus... And Desert Did the search warrant let you take from that property anything you wanted to? No, it had restrictions. What were the restrictions of the warrant? We were looking specifically for live ammunition, you know, 45 caliber. Okay. Um, 45 caliber live ammunition. Yes. Okay. Also, uh, when you get search warrants, you can't just search for like literally everything. So I'm glad the prosecution is is reiterating that the, the search warrant was fairly narrow. Like we were just looking for live ammunition in this size. Um, did you take all of the 45 caliber live ammunition from PDQ into evidence? Yes. Um, of all of the 45 caliber live ammunition that you took from PDQ, was any of it similar to the live rounds found on the set of rest? No. That's a good question. Um, 
how did how long did it take them to find nine rounds? It looks like it was searching for a needle in a haystack. Um, what was marked as defendant's exhibit Z. I've got hot tea, cold coffee is coming. Were all of those boxes taken into evidence? No. Why not? Because they did not contain 45 caliber live rounds. The show was good. Got to see friends, got to see Dave. The place was a mess. How do they know they got all the live ammo? I have no idea, nobody's asked. Question, could the immunity deals make the jury just distrusting of the prosecution? It's possible. I'm gonna show you it can leave them with a lot of questions, like why give, why give that guy a deal? Yeah. But if they can prove, if they can prove that the live rounds from PDQ did not match, and I think they've proved it. I don't think they've pointed it out well, but I think they've proved that. Um, then the jurors would be like, oh, well, this is why he wasn't charged because, you know, um, there were, the live rounds did not come from him. If they did, he would have been charged. Um, those, uh, these bags of, uh, of, uh, I'm a little Gatlinburg's reluctant to call a lot of fun. Have a great time. Um, but what appears to be Get some aluminum whiskey. brass casings. Um, were those uh, taken into evidence? No. Why not? Because they were not 45 caliber live ammunition. Belly, recover well As from you your knee surgery. Photo, do you know whether they were live ammunition at all? Uh, no, I don't believe they were. Okay. Louisa, good luck with the dissertation. Rihanna was asking this about the earlier cross-examination. How is this helpful to the defense? The defense is trying to put a, point out that everyone else sucks, You're that excused, they're going after Hannah, that everyone else got a deal. I'm gonna sneeze at some point, so I'm gonna have to mute myself. So if I just stop talking, it's because I have sneezed. They are approaching. This witness is done. Let's, um, I love being able to zoom, zoom through the sidebars. Court is so much better with a fast forward button. I don't know which witness they're calling next, but we will see. The state is trying to tie up loose ends right now, it seems. Um, I don't know how much of that has been helpful for you. The state crackling papers next to their mic is Do not helpful for me. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, have a seat talking to the microphone. Thank you. Oh, that's a, that's a, del that's a delight. This, uh, this is the first feed that has been this cranky uh, with me. And I am I am not pleased with the cranky feed. Give me one second. I'm gonna have to refresh this feed, y'all. So be patient with me because it takes a minute to reset the sound and everything else. The court just, it looks like it's taking a break. So I have we're gonna have time to get through this witness who I think actually does have purple hair, which is always exciting. Ms. Smith. All right, there we go. Oh, cranky court feeds today. You guys heard it, it was just playing. I'm gonna leave it alone. It was just, just playing. Um, oh, grass folk, it's not unused, it's just been made. <laughs> we can't have a messy bed in the background. Um, where'd this go? Alex said, chilling with the best after brain surgery. Alex, recover well. Um, lots of you guys recovering at the moment. I'm not recovered from this court feed being ridiculous and awful to us. I feel personally attacked. It was just playing. And we need the witness's name. So travel travel streaming is always um, a joy and a pleasure. It's better when I'm in the desert, have no voice, and the feed has to keep being refreshed. I'm trying to keep it on this feed because we have mono audio, but it's uh, it's definitely fighting with me. So we're going to do the best we can to get back to the very beginning of this witness's testimony and one, hope for the best. Employed? I was employed as key craft services. Was that on the set of Rust? Okay, hold on. Yes, this was okay. the soup angel key on the set of Rust. Give me one sec. I'm going to try to get her name. And, uh, oh, Emily. State your full name for the record. Rebecca Smith. There we go. And uh, Ms. Smith. In October of 2020, did I have purple hair when I was a prosecutor? Oh no, it I became a joke on YouTube. And now it stayed. Was that on the set of Rust? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 
Uh, can you explain to the jury what Key Craft Services does? Key Craft Services is basically a set mom. Um, I show up and make sure that coffee is ready well. for everybody, that everybody has snacks and hydration. If they run out of sunscreen, if they run out of chapstick, they come to me. She um, also has chapstick and, and snacks. What hotel were you staying at craft services. when you were working on the set of rest? The Inn at Santa Fe. And was Ms. Gutierrez also staying there? Yes, ma'am. Um, during the, the time that the two of you were both working on the set of Rust, did you get to know her? Know her? No. Um, I had a chance to sit with her once or twice, but not, not really get to know her. Okay. Um, would you say she was more of an acquaintance? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and Ma'am, we are day eight of trial. I'm gonna were need, you I'm present gonna need more at the hotel uh, the evening of October 21st, 2021? Yes, ma'am. This has to be the witness that and is at some point something. that evening, did you go to Ms. Gutierrez's hotel? Did are they gonna say that Hannah gave cocaine? to the sweet lady from craft services and was like, can you hold this for me? Is that what, what, what is happening? Yes. And why did you do that? Um, court and I forget what his name was, but the set steward, um, were in her hotel room and needed to go to the store to get something and did not want to leave her alone. So they called me and asked me to come up to her room. Okay. I and wonder if they were that? worried yes, because she was freaking um, out. And did you stay with Ms. Gutierrez for a little while? Yes, ma'am. Um, and then at some point, did you leave? Yes. Um, did anything unusual happen when you left Ms. Gutierrez's room? Yes. She asked me if I could hold on to something for her. I said yes. She put it in my hand and I walked out as there was a knock on the door. And after you uh, left the room, did you look to see what she had placed in your hand? Yes. And? And can you describe, without making any assumptions about what it was, can you just describe? How, Carrie, how are you going to prove that this is actually cocaine? How are you going to prove that, that this is not something that Hannah had just in her hotel room in the evening and thought police might search her hotel room. I hate this charge. I'm not gonna unhate this charge. I, I if this could have just been in her hotel room and she thought police might search her hotel room because of the shooting, gave it to this woman. So if police searched her hotel room, I think that she, if you're gonna destroy, you know, narcotics that you don't want the police to find, maybe, uh, there's other ways to dispose of those things than handing them to the soup angel from craft services. But we'll, we'll see. Just so you know, I hate this charge. The prosecution's gonna have to do a whole lot, a whole lot to make me not hate this charge. I hate this charge. I what you saw in your hand. Yes. It was a clear Ziploc baggie with a green small Ziploc baggie inside. And there was powder inside the green baggie. What color was the powder? White. Um, if I want you to compare this to like a sugar packet that you it was would... definitely not sugar. No, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> ma'am. Let, let, let me get my. Look like sugar. Let anyway. me get my question. Ma'am, was it booger sugar? Carrie, also, this charge is stupid. And if you're going, <laughs> sorry, my. Uh... My, my friend Chris is, is uh, watching the live stream behind the scenes and is now laughing at me. Um, but Carrie, stop getting snippy with this witness. She's trying to explain and Carrie's like, wait, just let me ask, let me ask my question. And I don't think the whole bag was green. Maybe the whole bag was green or maybe just the top zippy part was green. This, again, if this was not tested is a whole lot of a reach. Question now. Okay. Um, I want you, um, I want to, I want to have a discussion about Sorry, how much was in the green. Okay. Part. It sounds like the whole thing was green. And I want you to compare it to a sugar packet that you would open and put in coffee or tea. 
Okay. How many of those do you think it was? Maybe four or five. Okay. It was that um, big? And Ms. Smith, how old are you? I'm 50, 51. And when you were a, a younger person, uh, did you have an opportunity? Ma'am, were people doing cocaine in your bathroom? Were they doing it with Andy Cohen? Did it end up in a lawsuit? I can't with this. I can't with this. Ma'am, um, did you do coke when you were younger is where this prosecution's going. Jesus Christ. To use the drug cocaine. Oh, Jesus this Christ. I'm a recovering at it. Where um, are the are objections? Are you familiar with what cocaine looks Chat, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna continue to rip on the prosecution during all of this testimony, but let's go ahead and congratulate our, our soup angel from Craft Services for being in recovery, because, because good for you, ma'am. Looks like. Yes, ma'am. Are you familiar with the way that cocaine is packaged? Yes, ma'am. Um, is she an based expert on witness? That Why is no one objecting? What did you believe Mr. Bowles. to be in the bag? Bowles. I believe it to be cocaine. And what did you do? I this witness is very sweet. I, I like the craft services witness who was fighting for them to have soup on set amidst uh, probably fighting with uh, fighting with production about money. My my rage is reserved for the defense attorney in this moment. This is not an expert witness. You have not established her as an expert witness. Not to discount what she has been through in her life, but she has not been established as an expert witness. And the defense is letting the woman from Craft Services come in and be like, I was handed a baggie. It's obviously cocaine. This baggie has never been tested, never been tested by law enforcement. She threw it away. And the defense objects to nothing. She is not been determined to be an expert. She has not chemically tested this. Obviously, I don't think she's going to um, test it in any other way. She believes based on what she saw, which is fine in real life where somebody's like, oh, you just handed me cocaine, I'm getting rid of this. That's not fine for a court of law. This is not, this is, this is not proper evidence. And the defense is just sitting there like, uh, okay, the woman from craft services is now our narcotics identification expert. You know who else can't do this? Law enforcement. They can say they suspect it to be a thing, but then they have to like test it. And Bowles was just like, yeah, it's fine. Do with it. I threw it in the hallway trash can before even going downstairs to my hotel room. And why did you throw it in the hallway trash can? Because it was because cocaine like and said, I'm a recovering addict. Recovering addict, I can't first and foremost have it in my possession. And second, I was I was really very offended and I didn't want anything to do with the situation anymore. Okay. Um, this isn't after, a mistrial. The defense didn't do anything. After October 21st, um, uh, this charge is passes. stupid. Uh, did you receive any text message communications from Ms. Gutierrez? Yes, and, several. And generally speaking, what were the what what was the theme of those messages? I want my stuff back. <laughs> um, did you have any other stuff? Other than the were you holding anything bag else? With, containing the green bag containing the white powder. Other than that item, did you have anything else that belonged to Ms. Gutierrez? No, ma'am. Um, I think they're just going to cross-examine her. Why didn't she tell Hannah to throw it away herself? I think Hannah said, can you, can you take something for me? She said yes, grabbed it, walked out, looked at it, and went, the fuck, I'm dealing with that, and threw it away. That's what it sounds like happened here. Um, did you bring this information to the attention of law enforcement? No, ma'am. Why I, not? Because like I, I want, said, no, I I want nothing to fucking do with this. Uh, Jesse asked, why isn't dad in court? He's on the witness list. He can't be in court. All witnesses are excluded. So after he testifies, he can be in court, but he's on the witness list. To be involved in the situation if I didn't have to be. Okay. Um, and... How long after the incident do you think it was before 
someone reached out to you to talk to you about this? I believe it was about September of 2023 when you contacted me about it. And I personally called you? Yes, ma'am. Texted, I believe it was. Okay. Uh, and, and did you uh, tell me on that day what you have testified to today? Yes, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. Ma'am, this better not be your only evidence of freaking evidence tampering. I can see why Mr. Bowles was so offended. This charge was being tried at the Ms. same Smith, time. Good morning. Good morning. Now, ma'am, that night uh, when you went to Miss uh, Gutierrez Reed hotel room, you were called over and Miss Gutierrez Reed was distraught. Correct. Yes. Now you were called over, and there were um, you could see she was visibly distraught, couldn't you? Yes. And didn't you say that you would stay with her that night, make sure she was okay? I said I would stay with her for a little bit, yes, until court and the steward came back. Okay. And they didn't the want her to be alone. Left, she didn't want to back? be alone. There's nothing no. weird about that to me. So before they got back, despite your word earlier, you left. Yes. Sir, the, do not um, attack her. Didn't uh, Miss Gutierrez Reed also go to your room that night? No. Despite your word, did now, you leave? She's like, I have shit to do too. The last time you used cocaine was approximately 20 years old. Is that right? Yes, sir. So that would have been, I think, 31 years ago? Yes. And since then, thankfully, you've Hannah been Hannah was clean. not drug tested. Right? Yes, sir. So you have not seen that substance in 31 years. That's fair to say? No, that's not fair to say. Okay. I have seen it, just not used it. Okay. Now, you, you stated on direct examination that you believed it to be cocaine. Yes. And do you recall stating at one point that you said it could be cocaine or meth? Rob, um, I don't think it does. I don't recall saying that, no. I don't think it does. Okay, do you recall at your pretrial interview being asked the question, what was in those baggies? Inside the green, well, inside the snack baggie was the green baggie. Inside the green baggie was a white powdery substance, which I knew to be cocaine, or I mean, it could have been meth or something, too. It could have. Okay. But I don't believe that it was, nor did I state that I believed it was. I just said that it could be. And, and that was meth my question. So I'm just asking stinky. if you said it could have been meth, too. Correct. So, in reality, you weren't sure. it could have been... A number of other white powders. Would you agree with that? Sure. Um, do you right. know what creatine looks like? No. A protein powder? Mm, yeah. Mr. Bowles, no one is bumping fucking creatine. S Sir, I know that you're doing your job, but what it's not is protein. What it's not is pro what it's not is protein powder, sir. You, it, it, in the, no. However, I still don't think that the state has proved it. And they should have just stopped with her answer. Her answer, he's like, so you can't tell what it was. And she's like, no, it could have been this. It could have been that. I think when they get, when the prosecution rests their case, the defense gets to make a motion to dismiss. I think this charge, you can't prove it's drugs. Like, just stop, chat, you're killing me. Chat's like, when you have to get your macros. And you know what? The the point is, it could have been. It, it could have been. The state hasn't proved it. I just think it's hilarious that this is what he's saying. Could, could it be creatine? <laughs> sure. She, sure, counsel. Yes, because I work in craft services. Okay. She's like, um, I do know what protein powder is. Have you seen Jensen Eccles? But there's a lot of white powder, powder sugar, right? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the reality is mm -hmm. you have a belief, but you don't know for certain what was in that bag, do you? Correct. Now that was never tested? No. And that was never provided to law enforcement? No. And that's the point. How long did you hold that baggie before you threw it in the trash? I didn't make it all the way down the hallway. Yeah, that's the whole so point, Bowles. How this is the important shit, not whether it's creatine. I don't even know how many feet the hallway is long, so, can you, I mean. Can you look at the courtroom and estimate, just telling us? Um, 
Possibly to the distance of the gentleman in the blue suit. Okay, is he sitting at right a council here, table? Yes. So would you agree with me that's about 20, 25 feet? Sure. Okay. If you say so, So you sir. walk 20, 25 feet, and were you looking at that bag the whole time, or were you having it down by your side? At first it was down by my side, and then I, of course, raised my hand to look. Okay, now weren't you walking past some police officers too? Um, men in uniform, not sure whether they were police officers. Well, what do the uniforms look like? Um, they could have been armed security. I did not see an actual badge, so I could not say for sure that they were police. They were men in uniform in either security or police. Well, do you recall uh, being asked the question, why didn't you just hand it back to her? And you said, because I didn't want to do anything in front of the police on page 19 of your interview? Yes. So at that time at your you interview, thought they were police. you indicated they were police. Okay. I indicated that I believed that they were police, yes. No, you didn't say believe. You said because... She looks awfully put out. Um, she's very annoyed. I think it's funny. Uh, because, of course, she's annoyed. The prosecution shouldn't have brought this charge, and I hate all of this. Happy at Heart says, seems sketchy. Why would Hannah not flush it? I don't know. What's the going rate of these things? I don't know. It might have been a, can you hold this for me and give it back to me? That might have been a financial decision. That might have been a stress decision. I, I, have, I have no so idea. I didn't want to do anything in front of the police. Good to see you, Tinsley. It could be. So were they police or not? I don't know. Everybody acted like it was drugs. So the jury's supposed to assume it's drugs. I hate it. So don't you do that. walk down 25 feet, you look up at it, and then you throw it in the trash. Is that right? I looked at it and then waited for the trash can, of course. I didn't throw it on the floor or anything, so I did have to wait for the trash can to be there. Sure. So you, uh, in fairness, you probably had five seconds to look at this bag. Is that about right? Yes. So you this had a five-second glance. And I think he's right. A white baggie and a green baggie. It, to argue this uh, on... And you, the motion then to based dismiss. your conclusion on that. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you also said that you thought this was about four to five sugar packets. Correct. Okay. Well, do you recall uh, previously stating that this, you didn't know what the weight was? Correct. She's not saying the weight. I thought she was saying the size and, and volume. And do you recall indicating that it could be a couple of pounds? Ma'am. Okay. No. Ma'am. Well, do you recall being counsel? If somebody said they were handed a couple pounds of cocaine in the hallway of the hotel, I'm really good. I'm really going to need more information. Like I'm very much going to need more information. If if what you are saying is it was a couple pounds, I really need you to clarify. I really need you to clarify for me, like what is happening. Yes. Ask um, a question. Yeah, I've so got you a have lot no of experience questions. with weight, and you testify, well, I don't know what it weighed. I mean, it looked could be an eight ball, but I don't even know what an eight ball weighs. So, I mean, that's like asking me how much this weighs. I don't know. It's a couple of pounds. No, she's talking you about the eight ball being a couple no, of pounds. No, I don't need to see it. What I was referring to was a body armor that I had already opened and taken a couple of drinks of, and I held it up and said, I don't know what this weighs. Maybe a pound oh, or two. a drink. That was in reference to the body armor, not to the baggies. Okay, well, in reality, well done, ma'am. Five second glance. Would you agree? Counsel, don't try to don't try to intentionally confuse the situation by cutting out context. What she's saying is, wait, schmate. I don't know how much this much weighs. I don't know how much this much weighs. I don't know. She's like, I don't know how far the distance is. I don't know how much it weighs. I just don't know. Guess what? Same, same. Counsel, same. Agree with me, you have no idea what the weight was. Correct. Okay. Correct. And and you have you really, other than your guess, you have no idea for certain what was in that bag. Correct. And that's it. Leave it be. Yeah, you have, I have, may I just have you one have one? nothing further. 
I have, you have no idea what was in that bag, correct? It's speculation. That's not sufficient evidence. This should get yeeted. I'll be real annoyed if it doesn't. This should get yeeted. There's no evidence. There's no evidence that this was evidence. There's no evidence that this is last question. illicit narcotics. Do you recall in those text messages between you and Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, she at one point asked you back for her things, plural? Yes. Okay. And so things is different than is stuff. more than one, right? Yes. Okay. I have nothing further. Did she You're give right. you other things? Did she give you other things? It's the only question needed. Did she give um, you other things? Ms. Smith, have you ever seen powdered sugar packaged like that? Never. Have you ever seen regular sugar packaged like that? Never. Ma'am, people do have weird shit. Have you seen shit. cocaine packaged like that? Yes. Um, you were asked some questions about your um, contact with Ms. Gutierrez inside the room. Uh, did you, when, when you were in there, in Ms. Gutierrez's room visiting with her, did you speak with her? Yes. Um, did she uh, mention to you that she was extremely worried about Ms. Hutchins and, and Ms. Hutchins' death? No, ma'am. Um, what specifically did she say to you when, when you were in huh. the room with Why regard this to the concerns that she had? She was concerned about her career. She was concerned about being prosecuted um, because somebody got shot. All right. Yeah. Nothing further. Thank you, ma'am. Ask one more question. He's asking for a s right. Sir Cross. Can, can we approach? The prosecutor me? is not thrilled about that request. It's not a, it can happen. You, it just has to, I don't think the prosecutor should be getting feisty because she leaves half of her questions for redirect. And yes, if the defense has a question or two to ask, the court should allow it. It just has to be relevant and it has to be direct to the you were the one that told Ms. Gutierrez Reed that night that Helena had passed, correct? Yes. How does she react? All right, thank you, your excuse. That's thank it? You. Next witness. Who's the next witness? Let me look at the list in just one second. You need to look at the list, ma'am. State will call Seth Penny. Y'all. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you for your patience as we finally get to Seth Kinney, the PDQ arm and prop guy. I also think that they have not proved that the tampering with evidence charge. If we get to the end of the prosecution's case, they should argue it. I would be surprised if the court didn't heed it. But with this court, who knows? Let's get to Seth Kenny. I'm gonna zoom, zoom. Mm -hmm. Sir, we got a lot of fucking questions for you. We sure do. All right. Miguelina, let's uh, let the app crew know. The pr <laughs> First of all, I've never had to be an in-court reporter. It is very difficult sitting in court and not being able to make faces makes me wanna die. But I love the stands that they all have for their laptops. I'm going to need one of them. And I love that when they said all rise, they just pulled their laptops up with them. I, I love the media pool that's in this courtroom right now. It's great. It's great. So let's let the app crew know that this is what we're doing. Um, we're gonna zoom, zoom until he is on the stand and the jury's in the room. Why are we going to break? What are we, what are we doing? Y'all, the way I'm stressed out right now, cause I don't know what happens on this feed. Why are we, why are we going, why are we going to break? All right, I'm gonna try to zoom, zoom. I don't know why they brought Seth Kinney into the courtroom and then took a break, but that's exactly what happened. So we're zooming right past it. Um, I don't know what that was all about. Sure about something. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole Let's truth, and nothing but go. the truth? Let's go. All right, have a seat talking to the microphone. Thank you. The rabbit of Cabernog said felt like Good a morning, sir. State so your full name for drama the cliff. Good morning, Hanger. Seth Andrew Kenny. Yes, it does. Um, Mr. Kenny. <clears throat> Let's go, sir. Let's go. Where to begin? Uh -huh. um, in October of 2021.
Where to begin? Sir, did we offer you a deal to testify here today? And what kind of business did you run? I ran a, um, a prop and weapons supply uh, house to the film and entertainment industry. Could be anything from theater um, and also volunteer work associated with uh, active shooter training. Okay. W would you move that microphone a little closer sure. to you there? Yep. If you can. All right. Um, and do you still have that business? I do. Um, Thank you, Paige, for the office reference. How did reference. you get into the, into the prop supply business? And why are your I got contacted um, in about 2009. Uh, had previously been consulting for a firearms business, indoor shooting range. In retail uh, segment, sir, Ian's as got well Ian Runkle's got some questions training. for you too. So there was a crossover. There's some lawsuits and from we that, would like to talk to you about. I met uh, uh, an individual that was working in the film industry, and at some point he said he needed some help, and it was just going to be a two month thing, turned into fifteen years. Okay, uh, and that individual, uh, what kind of work did that individual do? He did a similar thing where he provided, he set up weapons, sent them out onto shows, and also worked as an armor on set. Okay. Um, All right, we got like two hours till lunch. Let's go, court. So how long have you owned PDQ Props? It's been about 12 years, maybe 13. Okay. And at some point, sir, uh, did you meet a gentleman by the name of Thel Reed? I did, very briefly. Oh, I was aware of Thel Reed um, because we were on opposite ends. He was working set on, um, on Django Unchained. And I was behind the scenes working with a prop master, preparing the weapons that were going to be used by cast. Um, so I was aware of him then. Uh, and then very briefly, one day, a prop master brought him into uh, the LA Prop House Arsenal, where I did actually meet him. It wasn't again until about 2018, where we became friends. Okay. Um, so when the two of you became friends, um, what, was, what did Thel do for a living, and how did it relate to what you did? Well, primarily, he's... More than anything, he's a, he's a gun coach, um, and he does work set as an armor as well. But what do you mean something by gun that he's coach? unrivaled in is is as being a gun coach. Oh, the, um, as an armor, he does a fantastic job, or he did uh, back in the day. Or he did so, back in the day. He and Thel have worked multiple movies together where Thel's the armorer, and then he'll get the um, arms, ammo, or whatever from Seth Kenny. It's a very symbiotic relationship between the prop houses and the armors, it seems. Um, he, would, he would work set, uh, and on the back end, I would prepare the weapons, for the most part. This should be I the state's last witness. As, I don't know what else they're going to do. Okay, when you say work set, what do you mean? Actually, uh, ending up on a call sheet, being hired by a film production. It could be episodics. It could be any, any TV show that you might see. Uh, you know, Walking Dead, for in, you know, Walking Dead, for instance, uh, and then, or it could just be a feature film, uh, like Django and Chain. And so, when you when you are hired by production, this is stuff he's comfortable uh, talking about. Wait till it gets uncomfortable. An employee or an independent consultant for that production, depending on where. Okay. What uh, so, working on set was not your thing. Definitely not my focus. Okay. Um, and what? At some point in time, did you and Mr. Reed um, work on a film together where Mr. Reed was uh, an armorer or a coach and you were the vendor, the, the supplier? That was, uh, it was 1883. Uh, it wasn't a feature film. It was more of a, you know, one run episodic. Um, and I had been working with Taylor Sheridan's prop master. Um, and who's Taylor Sheridan? Taylor Sheridan is a writer, director of, of the Paramount production, and he's kind of created his own segment of Americana that's very popular. 
Uh, are you talking about uh, Yellowstone and 1883? Yeah. Yellowstone, 1883. Sir, Yellowstone, 1923. Uh, Mary of Kingstown. Uh, Sicario. He wrote Sicario. Both. I Can believe. we stop talking about TV and get to the, uh, Wind get River. To the point? Amazing movie. Okay. Great. That was actually the first time that uh, I, I had been a provider consultant for Taylor Sheridan was on Wind River. Okay. okay. Uh, let's jump back to 1883. Uh, describe for the jury, please, how you and Mr. Reed sort of uh, worked together on that series. Well, I had to push hard to get him uh -huh. onto the crew. And oh, Chad, hired. I see you. Um, and so we talked about it, and I was I'm fairly tight with a prop master. You know, again, we've been working together since Wind River, um, and I convinced him to hire Thel um, and to keep him on longer than oh, it's you. most gun coaches or older persons would be allowed on set. You know, frankly, the Texas heat was just too much for him. For them. Um, so. And, and just so that everyone knows. Did you catch that? I, I convinced them to hire him. I convinced them to keep him on longer, longer than older folks would generally be on set because of the Texas heat. He's, he's also the one responsible for Hannah getting hired, by the way. So I'm not surprised that he's like, no, I'm the one pulling these strings. Uh, interesting, very interesting. Is approximately how old is Mr. Reed now? Exactly, I don't know, but he's gonna be pushing 80. Okay. Um, so in what capacity was Mr. Reed um, hired on the set of 1883, was he a coach or an armorer? Primarily, he was a, he was the gun coach. Uh, why? And he, and he okay. had difficulty with the Texas heat, so you know I was constantly making sure that he was in an air conditioned environment, and that's not, just not something that a, a, a set on Texas allows for. Sure. Um, and so, can we describe zoom, zoom. for the jury the kind of gun coaching that was being done on 1883. Objection relevance. Well, it, it, Objection relevance. Here's what she's going to argue to it being relevant, that this is how the ammo got mixed. Because the ammo they are suspecting came from Thel and they were doing live shooting on 1883. It involved That's initially, it was pretty casual and we were using replicas and it in, in this is why happened we're here. to be Taylor Sheridan's private um, Somebody uh, needs a Taylor When Sheridan you say replicas, are you counter. talking about real guns or fake guns? These are fake. These are fake guns. Okay. Replicas. Yeah. And and so that's where it started. It's kind of the other gun expert said the replicas were the real working guns that were made to look like older guns. He is using replica to talk about completely fake guns. It's the use of the word replica in this trial has meant like four different things. It's not clear. Of a meet and greet and just get some of the basics down. And Thale, you know, he's been doing it for so many decades, 60 plus years as a gun coach and armor. Uh, he knows uh, small bite-sized pieces to the, to the actors is, is best. Okay. So. Um, was there uh, coaching sessions that included real firearms? There were, then at some point uh, it was decided, uh, uh, and I'm not sure who made that decision, that they actually wanted to um, set up in, in uh, a private range on a portion of Taylor Sheridan's private ranch uh, with an appropriate backstop and it controls. And that is where the, um, the cast, it was a bit of a team building as well, learned about the, the, how the, function, the functioning of the firearms, you know, and we were mixed between blanks and live. Um, we had live ammunition in one area and then take people off to the side and shoot blanks. And essentially the safe distance on most blanks is about 20 feet. So we would take them away from the firing line and test and train them there. And primarily they had gotten it by that point. They had really understood for their characters what they needed to be and do on set. So you mentioned that during uh, these coaching sessions, uh, some of the cast was shooting with live ammunition, is that correct? That's correct. And do you recall what kind of caliber weapons the cast uh, was using to shoot that live ammunition from? It was a mix we had available from memory, uh, 
uh, 12 gauge bird shot just the basics of of that i don't think we even we even touched that ammo um the prop master had some guns that were chambered in 357 i believe some lever actions uh and also in 45 colt or 45 long colt both are okay and 45 right. long colt is um, the rounded issue can here. you explain to the jury well let me ask you this do you know where the live ammunition came from that was used in those coaching sessions i do well, where did it come from the 45 long colt came from thale um he had a number of reloads uh, that I asked him to bring because at that time it was very difficult to source live ammunition. Uh, it was it was difficult, so he had uh, what turned out to be 325 reloads of 45 long Colt. Reloads being reload, the way they. What are you talking about? Well, thank it's, you for following it, up, Gary. It's once used case, so every case of ammunition starts out as new. And at that point, what do you mean when you say case? The actual brass case. So if we talk about a round of ammunition, there are four components to that. There's the yellowish colored brass case, the primer that is pressed into the base of the case. Then we have gunpowder, some type of, it could be black powder, synthetic black powder, modern uh, smokeless powder, and then you need a projectile. And so those four, co those four components make up a single round of ammunition. Okay, uh, so the um, the live ammunition that was used for the coaching session was provided by Mr. Reed. Correct. And if you know, I don't know if you do, do you know where he got it? Yes, he said he got it from Joe Swanson. Okay. It's all here, Joe say. Swanson. Joe Swanson is probably the primary supplier of blanks and dummy rounds to worldwide. Do you know what the initial uh, for Joe if, Swanson are? If you happen are? to see J. something S. go bang in a puff of smoke in a in a movie or, or an episodic a television show, worldwide, chances are that Joe Swanson made it. Okay. <clears throat> Chat, uh, Rosebud's for fun, I've seen a lot of people ask this, why is she being so gentle with him? Now, I, I don't know. He, she needs him as a witness to put this on Hannah. So this is not um, was all of the a witness she's going to attack. Long Colt live ammunition that was used for the training camp on 1883, was it all used up? No. Uh, so can you tell us approximately how much was left over? How do, what do you know that? Uh, was it counting? It was, if memory serves me correct, is there a foundation uh, it was about for any of this? in 25 rounds, roughly. And what happened to that ammunition after you finished training the actors on 1883? Well, that's a little bit hazy. At one point, I do recall that- So why are you that, justifying to it? Um, it? Certain things were offloaded um, from my sprinter van because they just weren't needed. Um, and that was, that was one of those things. But at some point, it got moved back to Albuquerque, and I've never been able to pinpoint the date. Um, Who the moved it back to Albuquerque? Where did it go? Correct. And specifically, where in Albuquerque was it being housed? Yeah, where? It was in a gray bin marked live ammunition, and it was actually in the bathroom. Of where? Of uh, PDQ's location in Albuquerque. So it came back business. to you? Correct. Okay. So it came back to you. Um, and can you explain to uh, the jury how you um, how you would keep how did you know it was live and how were you able to keep it separate from dummies and blanks well it's 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 obviously it's a concern anytime you've got these things in let's just say one structure uh-huh um, and in this instance always better to keep live ammunition near blanks rather than dummy rounds because dummy rounds and live ammunition can look exactly the same. So if, if we were to look, if I were to set aside a single blank and a piece of, in a, in a round, single round of live ammunition, it would be obvious which is which just from looking at it. Okay. The same cannot be said for live ammunition. So 
these are these are things that should never be next to each other. Um, did you keep? I'm all putting this at 1.25 the... speed. 45 long cult live well, ammunition we did in the gray bin. It we're, was in the gray bin. And it was seen marked his affect. on two sides live ammunition. We're going to speed up when um, we do this background. Did you have 45 long cult live ammunition stored anywhere other than the gray bin at PDQ in Albuquerque? No. And the gray bin in the bathroom. Do you recall um, a search warrant being executed at PDQ? I do. And when the search warrant was executed, were you present? I was. Um, did you aid the police? Absolutely. Um, and did you provide law enforcement all of the 45 Colt live ammunition and that this you is had better at sped PDQ? Up. Yes, and it wasn't it wasn't spelled out in the warrant that way. Um, it, if what did it say in the warrant? My memory serves me correct. The warrant specified that any any live yeah, well, and it's okay. I'll, okay. I'll I'll make we'll move on from that. I understand your concerns. Um, so let's not talk about the warrant, okay? Um, <laughs> I understand your concerns, counsel. Objection, like the judge hasn't ruled on any of these objections. If if she is convicted and this gets appealed, the appellate rap record is going to be an absolute disaster. But it was, she, it's all hearsay. He can't talk about what's in the freaking search warrant. Was there now another show steps. that you and Mr. Reed uh, both supplied firearms and ammunition to after 1883? No. So let, let, let me, did, did you supply This movie, she wants to talk about this movie. Or, and when I say ammunition, I apologize. I mean blanks and dummies um, to Hint, the set this one. She wants to talk about this one. The Old Way. Yes. Oh, the, no, not that this one. That was filming concurrently with 1883. Okay, they were happening at the same time. Yes. All right. Um, so the... What did you wait, provide? Excuse me, wait, actually, sorry. Um, no, you don't get to just no, they fix think about your it. answer. Actually, Hannah was rapping the old way and we were still in pre-production at that point. That we, I don't think we had gone to camera yet. On 1883? Yeah, I, I remember being in Texas at the time when Hannah was rapping out the old way, which is essentially concluding filming. They, you know, no more camera work at all, right? She's packing up her guns, she's packing up her, you know, her bags okay. to, to leave Livingston, Montana. Her and we were still prepping and Mary to Kay go bag? to camera but working for production on 1883. Okay, uh, so you indicated that Hannah was involved in uh, the movie The Old Way. Can you explain to the jury in what capacity was she working on that film? Well, it was her first solo lead um, as head armor um, and uh, Thale got in touch with me and said no, that- Hang on, Wait, I don't want any hearsay. Okay. Um, so so she, she was the lead no, armor. No, you don't that want that hearsay, she other shits come in. Arm. Correct. Okay. Um, Explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you supplied to the set of the old way. It, roughly uh, half the guns, most of them the long arms, which are lever actions and shotguns and single shot uh, rifles as well. And then there was a mix of about 50-50%, 50% fail, 50% uh, PDQ supplied the blanks. Um, I supplied 14 rounds of 38-40 dummy rounds and Thale and Hannah supplied the balance of the dummy rounds. Okay, so you supplied, the only dummies that you supplied to the old way were caliber 3840. Correct. Did you supply any 45 long colt dummy rounds to the set of the old way? No, I didn't have any. And you only supplied 14 3840 dummies? It's all I had, yeah. Okay. Um, and. It's your understanding that Mr. Reed and Ms. Gutierrez supplied the remaining dummy rounds to that show? Yes. Um, They're trying to track where the ammo went and where it could have come from because the prosecution's arguing the that dummy Hannah rounds brought that the Ms. live Gutierrez rounds on the set, supplied to the not set PDQ. Of the way. Uh, if you know. That's you know where they're trying to get them? to. She got them from Thale. All right. We'll see if the state brings it up. It should be the last thing the state brings up. That's the way she's been doing it so far. Question, do we know if how many jurors are gun owners? Um, um, no, I don't know if they even do asked you that. Do you source uh, a lot of your ammunition from Mr. Swanson? 100%. Actually, no, excuse me, 90%. Um, and Which do you is it, 90 or 100? Mr. Swanson? And again, not ammunition. Understood. Just dummy rounds and blanks. Okay. 
Um, do, do you source both dummy rounds and blanks from Mr. Swanson? Dummy rounds 100% from Joe Swanson. Okay. Um, Fell's on the defense witness list. I think we should look at some pictures. Oh, great. That feels like what we should do. Mr. Um, Wallace, will you have a look at something with me? Charlotte said, I read who counsel for AB is and have had experience with the law firm he's with. I can guarantee Alex's trial is going to be super spicy. Charlotte, Alex's trial is going to be spicy. Agreed. Question. I thought when someone is involved in any type of workplace accident, they are immediately given a UA. Did that happen in this case? I'm not sure what you mean by UA. So I, um, I, don't, I don't know. Sorry. Um, I feel Hannah was pushed around because of her being a young woman with purple hair not fitting in and she wasn't up to her role to take place. I don't know. Um, it seems like she would have fit in fine on the movie set. She grew up, um, she grew up this way and she grew up on the sets of movies, but I, I don't know um, what was going on on this set. There were issues with her and her supervisor, Sarah Zachary. So who knows? All right, we're gonna zoom, zoom past the tech issues the best we can. This is why I start on a delay. I do. Thank you. Um, have you ever had a box of dummies from Mr. Swanson with that label? No, never. And why would you how not do you know? have We've a seen, box how do you with know? this label if you're sourcing your dummy rounds from Mr. Swanson? Well, 1883 was the first period show that, um, that I needed uh, 45 long cold dummy rounds for. Uh, prior to that, even though we had done flash, a flashback scene with Tim McGraw and Yellowstone, th there was no call for dummy rounds or the prop master sourced them elsewhere. Um, so Put name I, dropping I on your bingo them. card. And when I did, it was I needed them by the thousands, not by boxes of 50. And so what happened is uh, Joe Swanson, he asked me, do you want me to package them up? I said, no, there's no point. Right? It's more work for everybody. So he uh, s uh, sent them to me in bulk. Okay. And so you never had anything like this in your possession? Never. And let's talk about the um, dummy rounds that you provided to the set of Rust. Did you provide 45 long cult dummy rounds to the set of Rust? I did. I supplied a single box of, uh, of 50 on October 12th. And the where did those dummy rounds come from? They had just come off of the day prior um, from the prop truck in Texas. Oh, the uh, defense is not going to go easy on this guy at all. At all. So when you took the dummy rounds that you supplied to the set of rust from the prop truck on 1883, I'm, I'm finishing walk breakfast, us through so thanks for hanging with me. With them. Hopefully you're eating breakfast, it, lunch yeah, or so dinner the, too. Uh, Sarah and Hannah um, had issues with a couple of guns, and uh, so potentially they needed re uh, replacements. There was an issue with the reassembly after cleaning. So I pulled uh, some of PDQ's inventory from the 1883 prop truck uh, to make sure that I had something to replace. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a 45 long Colt chambered gun that matched what they had on, uh, on rust. But I did find one in chambered in 4440. Tell uh, us more about so the issues, I please. I took that gun, a box of 4440 dummy rounds, and also spotted some antiqued uh, 45 long Colt dummy rounds in bulk and put them literally into, and into a double bag of uh, some type of grocery store bag. Uh, and they went, those three a items went into bag. my Sprinter van, and I drove uh, straight from that set to uh, my PDQ's location in Albuquerque. And when you got to the PDQ location in Albuquerque, um, what did you do with the 45 long cold dummy rounds that you brought from 1883? They, uh, it's kind of an odd thing to say, but because there were probably a considerable amount of money in firearms in the van at the time that were headed back to California. Uh, I slept in the van with, with the guns uh, behind closed gates, but that's just what you have to do. So it wasn't until the morning of the 12th that they were brought into, into the, you know, my place, the PDQ's uh, location in Albuquerque. Okay, and what did you do with them when, when you brought them inside? Well, I got rid of the, the grocery bags straight away, and I built a small brown cardboard box, and they got poured into there. Uh, Sarah Zachary was running late, um, and when she showed up, I was able to reassemble and test the gun. And let uh, me stop you real quick, ju just so that we're connecting all the dots. What, why was Sarah Zachary coming to PDQ on, on October 12th? Well, she needed to, to find out whether or not I could quickly reassemble the gun without issue and make sure that it was ready to uh, be used on camera for rust. And were you able to do that? I was. 
Okay. Uh, but she ended up running probably three hours late, um, and I had nothing else to do. Essentially, I was just headed, waiting to meet with her, and and drive to California. So um, while I was sitting there doing nothing, why I were you going to California? Antique eight, what set was on uh, California? That had been dipped in a chemical uh, that patinaed not only the lead bullets oh, but also the cases patina. very heavily, too heavily, and they didn't look right. They didn't look right for camera. So I just sat there and decided, well, I'll just see what it looks like after I polish them up with some quad steel wool. And that's what I did. What I realized, though, too, is that some of the chemicals seemed to have leaked into the case, and some of the rattles seemed muddy. Um, and What do you mean when you say some of the rattles seemed muddy? Well, it's, we, Joe Swanson, for the most part, stopped using BBs inside the dummy rattles. What do you mean about the, the rattles uh, seeming the muddy? The, uh, the sound guys could hear them on camera. So if the gun is being manipulated, he could actually hear the dummy rounds rattling around. And there's a number of instances where I can hear dummy rounds in TV and, and, and movies um, where I can spot it. And I'm like, oh, you can hear the dummy rounds rattling. It's kind of interesting. So he switched to using a single piece of number two lead shot, which is Sir, an adequate what? rattle, but it's a little bit muffled. And I, and I suspect what had happened is the chemical had caused some kind of gooey layer, to my best guess. And so I noticed so that now. some of the, they just didn't sound safe to me. It, they just didn't sound like I wanted, you know, Hannah and Sarah to have to be dealing with something that seems odd. And so I selected, um, before I sat there and polished each dummy round, I had to make sure one, it rattled before I spent a minute polishing around. If we're talking about a box of 50 plus writing a label on both ends, I sat there with this box for an hour. So they got rattled oh before God. they got polished, polished and then re-rattled to make sure they, you know, they would rattle without issue and then individually inserted into the box. Okay, hang on just a second. So he loaded that box himself, the one that ended up back on set is what he's saying. Um, I'm gonna answer some of your questions as we're going. <sighs> All right. Um, this guy just admit the lives were with him. He, Jam Jam, he had some of the live rounds, um, but those live rounds were chemically different than the live rounds that were on set. So that's what the prosecution is go um, trying to clean up. Oh, Mr. a K, UA drug screen. You, uh, it wasn't done in this case. Been entered into uh, evidence as so, Defendant's Exhibit L43. I don't know if that's Switcher common with Elmo workplace this, issues. It requires too many It didn't steps happen here. Too long. Do you recognize that? I do. <laughs> yeah, we have what all is seen this a photo that. Of? Yeah, it's a photo of the uh, the brown cardboard box that I had just taped up to purposely hold those aged dummy rounds and you can see in the picture what they look like before being polished with guado steel wool okay um, I am going to show you uh, what has been marked as states exhibit 174 uh, there's no objection to um, admitting this into evidence and I'd like to publish All right. states 174 is admitted you may publish okay Mr. Kenny what is this a photo of that's the same box just it's missing the I think I, I saw some spent uh, blank cases this the is why they well recalled the, the last symbol. witness to get okay. this photo in. Um, okay. So when did you take this photograph? I don't recall. Um, is, the last is witness. Is this a photograph of the dummy rounds that you provided to the set of rust? That's There's correct. So it would it would have to be, the, the picture was okay. either taken on October 12th or after. Okay. Because that, that box and those, those dummy rounds didn't exist until that morning of They're October 12th. They're just like 12th. dumped into a big okay. old box. Um, and after, you, I think you indicated that you rattled them, polished them, and rattled them again. Is that right? Correct. That's what he said. This is how they were packed. Yep. Dumped and into a box. did you, how did you provide them um, to the set of rust? Were they in a bag? Were they in a box? They were in a, in a white box um, with Gaffer, white gaffer tape, which is kind of a, a pattern tape, um, very strong. And I hand wrote in blue Sharpie ink on both ends of the box what the contents of it were. That's why they talked about All the right, Sharpie box I'm going earlier to this morning. Show you what has been we're going to see the Sharpie box again. Into evidence as States Exhibit 48. Do you recognize that? I do. What's that? That is the box of dummy rounds that I supplied to um, to Sarah gaffer Zachary uh, on October 12th. Blue Sharpie. So the dummy rounds that we saw in the box, in the, in the brown box in the previous photo, uh, you took those and you put them into this box. What, what, is, what we see in the, in the brown box with the, the aged question. dummy rounds is the remainder. Because again, I didn't, I didn't just take 50 rounds. I, I, I took 
I would estimate up to nearly a hundred in total. So we've got the rest this the is a box that contained fifty dummy rounds, a aged and polished, um, and the remainder was Are left where? in that brown court cardboard box. Okay. When you're talking about the remainder. Are you talking about what's shown in defense? So 50 in a box 43? and 50 yes. thrown in a box. There's a lot. And the other photo of the brown box answers are not without simple. the steel wool, is that, are those the ones that actually ended up in the box and went to rest? No, those are still it's the remaining. Leading. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what has been uh, entered into evidence as States Exhibit 48A. Do you recognize that? I do. What's that? It appears to be that same, uh, the, the foam insert uh, and dummy rounds, the, the polished antique dummy rounds that I gave to Sarah Zachary on October 12th. Although, yep. one of them appears like it doesn't belong. Are you talking about this one? I believe it to be uh, that it, round. Uh, 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 it doesn't look it, like it's had any aging. How is no one objecting? I've seen it in other evidence photos where they're laid on oh the side. Oh my God. So, let, and hang on just a second. Let's. Who are we hanging on? Let's, uh, let me show you uh, what has been previously entered into evidence at States Exhibit 166. She's trying to get him to stop. What's the record you're talking about? That's it. If we look at the top row and and all the way to the right of the top row, just beneath that, it appears that, that round is inconsistent. Circle. Yeah, he needs to circle it himself. Not the pro the prosecutors put her cursor on it. She's like, oh. <laughs> touch uh, clearly the prosecutors just left her cursor on it which some defense attorneys would also object to because she's put her cursor so that right on round the that I've circled in red that he's talking about yes it's not it's, obvious, here, uh, but it's not best practices. like the others and I have a tough time thinking that I would uh, provided that round okay um, and after you gave the box to Ms. his testimony is I have a tough time thinking I would have provided that round Zachary and it was taken to the set of rust do you know what was done with it after that? No, I had, even if she left it in her car, I had no idea what she had done with it. Okay. Whether or not they used it or, or not. Okay. I'm gonna show you um, what has been previously entered into evidence as States Exhibit 39. Do you recognize that? I've seen this photo before, yes. Um, do you recognize the dummy rounds that appear to be in the belt? How could he recognize it my tell from it's, this photo? it's hard to tell, yeah. Okay, so let's. let's and, the, uh, and the shadows in the photos would make it difficult just, as well. Okay. Sir, uh, let's go ahead and can you just to, answer questions? Um, Jesus. States Exhibit 40, this is previously entered into evidence. Um, does that photo help? It does. Uh, so I believe we've heard testimony that these are, from the crime scene uh, specialist, that these are the rounds that were taken out of the belt. Um, does that look, do those look like your rounds? They do. They're they're definitely similar. Um, a higher resolution on an iPad would be ideal, but they look very similar. Can I guarantee that those are <laughs> the PDQ rounds? The no. higher resolution of an iPad say. would be ideal. Um, sure. Casually, sorry. yes. Court of law, eh, not okay. so much. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm you, going to show you what has not, been previously uh, entered into evidence as states exhibit. You're not funny. 29. I don't know why the that? prosecution's laughing. Um, and do you see Oof. that? Uh, this photograph has a has an extra round up here. I do. Um, More leading. Are you familiar with what a Denix round is? I am. Um, what, what's a Denix round? That round just looks skinnier. Well, it's it's a it's a costume round. Um, what's it, the difference between a costume round and a dummy round? Costume rounds uh, don't rattle. I'm exhausted. Um, first off, the Denix round uh, that I've found that I've tested you won't chamber. Where? in a gun either. The the cast manufacturing seam is out of spec, so even though it says 45 Colt or 45 long Colt on the end of it, uh, you actually can't get it to chamber. Um, Hang on just a second. When you said the cast manufacturing seam, can you see that in the photo? I can, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and underline it. Okay. Jolene in the chat said ADB. All right, thank you. There's not enough coffee for um, this. That's exactly how I feel. You can read my face Have accurately. you ever had Denix rounds in your um, inventory? No, because it's 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 something that uh, if it if it doesn't rattle and it's coming from a weapon supplier, a vendor, it sets a dangerous precedent that we can say dummy some dummy rounds don't rattle. And 
there is Everything definitely debate would have to rattle regarding this point. Unless there's PDQ, a though, hole in and it. I have never sent out any dummy round that doesn't rattle, whether or not the primer has been struck by a firing pin. So even if we're talking about, well, we can assume that because the firing pin has hit the primer, are you, it must be a dummy round and there's nothing in it. And are that you is talking definitely about not the case. large generalities? Are you talking about this case? Are you Even the internet's over this testimony at the moment because the stream is definitely Primers will buffering. not go off with just one hit of a firing pin. And so we and we don't know that that's a purpose Kimberly built saying, dummy round. Unless it rattles, it's not to be trusted. Okay. Um, and did did you I provide agree with that. Unless it's rattled, to it's not to be trusted. No. I agree with that. And, and it's your testimony that. that the Denix rounds actually don't really fit in the revolver. Is that right? The ones that I've tested do not. Are they okay. wonky? Because of the seam. Because of the seam. And it appears overall that that they're oversized, very slightly, but it's enough to prevent them from being inserted into a, uh, a revolver. So they're okay. wonky. Um, and do you know a gentleman by the name of Billy Ray? I don't know him personally. We've communicated. Actually, no, excuse me, let me back up. I don't know him personally, but what I do have to say is don't tell his heart, his achy, breaky heart. He just don't think it understands. I, I, I need the prosecution to get to what we're here for. Did meet briefly. We met briefly. He owns a, uh, a similar uh, company providing weapons and props as well as dummy rounds and blanks to productions. I believe he's a set uh, designer. Uh, did you reach out to Billy Ray uh, with regard to supplying dummy rounds to the set of rust? I did. Uh, again, PDQ, everything we had slated uh, in inventory was to be used on 1883. So we didn't have uh, any 45 Colt dummy rounds. Like we had no inventory. So I reached out to Billy Ray by text and asked him if he did have any in stock because uh, they needed more. And did he have any? He did not, that but what he did have, to not be which uncommon appears in on the industry. camera, uh, and, and to anyone else, if you were to, to insert these, what he did have into a leather gun belt from three feet away, you wouldn't know what was in that uh, gun belt. And so what he had was spe very specifically, he got back to me and said, I have 98 44 40 dummy rounds and 42 38 40 dummy rounds. And how do you remember were those, those provided exactly? to the set of rest? Uh, he met up with Sarah Zachary, and, and that's how they ended up, I'm assuming, on set. And are you the person that connected them so that Ms. Zachary could obtain the dummy rounds? Yes. Um, so, to the best of your knowledge, did Billy Ray provide any 45 long colt dummy rounds to the set of rust? No, I mean, he was very specific. I mean, uh, casually you'd say, well, I've got three boxes that'll work. But he went into greater detail. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and let, me, let me stop you there. And, and when you were talking about having uh, a 3840 or a, or, or a 4440 dummy round in a gun belt, uh, you said that you, the, the viewer wouldn't know what they were looking at. That's correct. And is that because they look very, very similar to That's 45 leading. long it, Yes. Okay. The defense is just, just doesn't seem to be ready. Uh, EDB is over this witness, says the Tomlet. I'm so not. In terms of I'm ready to get dummy to like rounds, what we need to talk about. We understand about that you provided more. some, and we've looked at I'm those just, photos. We're eight days You've in. You've testified antsy. that Billy Ray provided some, and you've explained that to us. Was there anyone else who provided 45 long colt dummy rounds to the set of rust? Yes. Who's that? That was Hannah. So and we're trying to get to everything that was if on If you set. know. He definitely Where did Ms. Gutierrez say that she got the dummy rounds from that she took on to the set of rust? It was the same supply uh, that she had gotten from Thale uh, that she used on the old way. And how do you know that? Common, you know, it was just conversation and text message. She told you? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what If there were objections, this wouldn't exhibit. be going this way, but there's not. 175, it's my understanding that there is no objection to this, and I would... Uh, ask permission to publish. No the admitted he may publish. Hannah's statements are not well. They shouldn't be offered for the uh, truth, but they sir, are the statements of a party opponent. Before? So there's some hearsay exceptions to Hannah's statement. And what is this? It's a conversation. Who's participating in the conversation? Uh, sorry. This witness and the prosecution are not having an easy time questioning yeah, with each other. It's a text conversation between myself and Hannah. Um, so this is a what's the, what's the date of this conversation? At the moment. 
again. I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses. Uh, October, was it 5th? Is do, you, the do you need some readers? I probably have no, five No, it's I, the new prescription. I broke my glasses, and the new prescription is it makes me feel nauseous. So let's see. If I take a picture. Does that help you? Oh, yeah, October 5th. Okay. Uh, what I mean, what are you and Ms. Gutierrez rel- talking relatable, about? Relatable, but man. Well, we're, we're talking about the, um, let's see. Well, what specifically? Yeah, well, there's a few dates in there. Sir! Go ahead and just take a moment and review it, and then I'll ask you some questions about it. No, you're, I'm asking her about how she was looking on, you know, for... You're testifying in a trial. You're not narrating your day. What are we talking about? What What's the context here? What date? My new glasses prescription makes me nauseous. Sir, can you... This is why the prosecution is having such a hard time with this witness. Can, she, she's just trying to get him to the point, and he... He wants to have a microphone in front of him. Leather. Uh, and what, wait, when you say leather, what do you mean? Uh, it would be primarily gun belts, but it could also mean bandoliers as well. I don't think, uh, I don't recall that Rust had call for bandoliers. Um, it was just primarily, you know, gun belts and holsters. Each gun belt holds roughly, can hold up to 18 rounds of uh, Okay. Um, so to, to kind of move through this, in this text conversation, uh, does Ms. Gutierrez indicate to you um, that... She can't find any of the dummies. Yeah, and she mentions, you know, some of them are still in the belt. And, That's in the leading. Belt. So hang on. Yep. Um, are they going to enter this into she evidence? She can't find any of the dummies. What is your response? Is this going to go into evidence? Or are we just going to read <laughs> the whole thing? Or? What happened to the dummy? Yeah, what happened to the dummy rounds from toe, the, which is an abbreviation of the old way. Okay, and what's her response? Some of them are still in the belts. Yeah. Um, and then, what do you explain to her? Uh, something Hannah's about statements are not hearsay. Dummy rounds don't get statements. returned. What, what what are you telling her? Uh, let me know if you need me to. Do you need me to make it bigger? I mean, I might as well just pull it up on my phone. Um, oh my God! You can't do that. Yeah. So yeah, I was just explaining, you know, to her that um, she needs to, um, you know, let me know, or as a normal course of business moving forward, um, now that she's no longer underneath her dad's <laughs> wing, that. If something gets lost or damaged on set, um, it needs the production needs to pay for it. You you, you said that's an L and D. L and D mean? Lost and lost or damaged. Okay. And in this instance, she's just saying, you know, essentially, yeah, they you know they do they fall you know just commonly, the dummy rounds fall out of out of gun belts for stunts or even maybe picked up for souvenirs by extras or actors. Who knows? Okay. Chet, I and, get and, that he has said that he can't see, but that's on the prosecution to either provide him a paper. Um, blow it up on the screen or provide him other evidence he can't just pull it up on his phone and look so this is on the prosecution or on him for knowing he was going to need to look at documents and not bringing readers in whatever form were appropriate for him uh ms gutierrez responds and she actually i think this confirms is all. what you just said isn't that right yes she says you never mentioned this i definitely lost some off of the belts during the action scenes right right she says maybe like 50 total. I'm not sure. And then she says, so I have to round those up tomorrow and count these? Yep. That was the conversation. Um, he definitely has his and, phone and in his hand and nobody said anything. He's now looking at his phone on the witness stand. You both just send me out to do and these things and shit. don't teach me right. Shame on both of you. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you respond, you're a naughty child. I'll let Papa handle this one. Right. Were you joking? Partially. <laughs> I'm... I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind that he's on his phone on the witness stand and nobody has just said anything and that this is just happening. I'm going to get back to these text messages. I had to back up because I'm still stuck on the phone, but what is happening? Like, it seems that he is saying to Hannah, if you use things that you brought onto set, production needs to pay you for it. We've heard that from others that have testified. But then we get into her saying, it seems, but you guys can't just tell me this. I don't know this. And then, and then into the, the kind of naughty child text. Um, And then does she say to you, you both just send me out to do these things and don't teach me right. Shame on both of you. She sounds frustrated. Uh, and, and you respond, you're a naughty child. I'll let Papa handle this one. Right. Were, were you joking? Partially. <laughs> um, and what was her response? Uh, so what if off. I need more? You guys freaking blow. Okay. You guys blow is is her response to them. 
And I get it, because now he's telling it. it <sighs> We're just, I, I'm, I, um, yeah, so I'm sure, I'm sure. Based she, on uh, it, States Exhibit 175, was it your <sighs> impression uh, that Ms. Gutierrez was bringing dummy rounds that were already loaded into gun belts? Absolutely. Not only that, but we were counting on it. What do you mean you were counting on it? Because there were there, you know, everything else from PDQ was slated for 1883. Uh, in fact, it, some of it wasn't even manufactured yet, so there was just no inventory. And the only way that she was, they were going to have, you know, dummy rounds on rust is by reaching out to other suppliers in the business, and they needed them straight away. And Billy Ray happens to be in Albuquerque, so that's a that's a straightaway solution. Okay, was it was it your understanding from that conversation with Ms. Gutierrez? that the dummy rounds that she was providing to the set of rust were left over from the old way. Yes. Yeah, I am frustrated that Hannah's like, you guys need to tell me this stuff. And his response is, you're a naughty um, I'm child. I'm going to take you Dick. to. And she's like, come the, on, guys. Like, what are you doing? I'm going to take you to October 21st, 2021. Um, do you recall that day? Yes. And I bet he does. Let me ask you. Prior to October 21st of 2021, were you ever physically present on the set of rust? No. Um, when was the were first supposed to be? date that you were physically present on the set of rust? It was uh, when the sheriff's department executed the warrant on the prop truck. And why did you need to be present for the sheriff's department to execute the warrant on the prop the, truck? Some the safe and stuff. It wasn't that I needed to be? Um, okay, then why were you there? I felt I I, I wanted to be there. To okay, why? And how did you intend to facilitate? Well, just to be available to answer questions th that may have come up. Um, why? In addition to you were never on set. Why blank ammunition and some dummy rounds to the set of rust? Did you also provide firearms? Yes. Approximately how many firearms did you provide, if you recall? Approximately thirty. And do you know where the thirty firearms that you provided were being stored? They were being yes, they were being stored. Uh, on the prop truck, in the safe. Um, She's trying to get to the reason he wanted to be on set was not to tamper okay. with anything um, like the defense and, and is going to insinuate because he was worried about his guns. Of rust, That's where she's uh, trying to get this witness to go. Fieta 45 he, he's that, not going there, uh, though. became Mr. Baldwin's prop gun. I did. And where did you get that gun from? Those, came, uh, those guns came from Pieta's. Pieta's an Italian manufacturer, and they supplied... They, they have a principal, and, and I think it's a single importer located in California. And I purchased them specifically for the Rust Show um, directly from their facility in California. And do you know when you purchased that gun, uh, was it new or was it used? Baldwin's gun was, uh, was brand new, as, as were, uh, I believe, it's 11 of the 12 revolvers uh, that were rented to the rust production were all brand new. Um, so I'm going to take you back to October 21st. That's a lot of on new October guns 21st, on set. Did you find out that there was some sort of an injury that had taken place on set? He was I supposed did. to be um, your supervisor. I missed a call from Sarah Zachary in name and only. quickly thereafter she sent me a, uh, a single word by text in all caps, emergency. And when you received that text, what did you do? I called her back within a few minutes. Okay. Um, and, and let me ask this. During that conversation, uh, did you tell Sarah Zachary to do anything with any I get of it, Marjorie. the um, dummy rounds or firearms or anything like that on set? No, there's, absolutely not. There's a lot of people who um, are in the wrong on this set. This defendant, I think, is one of them. But this witness might have also been one Zachary, of them. Um, did so you call I get Mr. Reed? I did. I, I, I tried several times to get a hold of him and were by you, phone. Were you ultimately able to get a hold of him? I was. He returned, uh, and I, I recall texting him as well, um, <sighs> Just and he did question. finally return my call. Okay, and I'm not going to ask you what he said during that call. Thank you. Um, during the filming of Rust, uh, did you occasionally communicate with Ms. Gutierrez? Yes. And was there a time that you and Ms. Gutierrez um, had a disagreement? 
the primary disagreement occurred on October 16th. And I want to hear more was, about that. What, what was the subject matter of that disagreement without saying what anyone said? Subject matter um, related to an accidental discharge of a, of a blank on the set of rust. Okay. Um, after the disagreement that you had with Ms. Gutierrez on October 16th, did you, if you recall, did you speak to her again before this, between the 16th and the 21st? No. Um, and why weren't you uh, speaking to her? Was there, was there anything that she did or said during the October 16th conversation that was upsetting to you? Well, it was clear that she was emotional. She sent, um, she sent me a text message uh, back that had uh, a, a number of expletives associated with it, and uh, and so you know, and I just felt that she needed some space, and maybe an apology was due, uh, and I was just going to give it some time. An apology was due to who? Well, I thought to me. Okay. Um, Understood. Um, you were owed an apology sir, for what? Did you provide any live ammunition to the set of rust? Are no. we done with this? Did direct? you ever give any live ammunition to Sarah Zachary? No. Have you seen photos of the live ammunition that was found on the set of rust? I have. Did you possess any ammunition that looked like that? No. At some point in time after the incident on the 21st, did you become aware that um, you were perhaps being blamed? I, yeah, I started to Relevance? sense. Um, Where are we going with this? That there was efforts to redistribute blame or the the cause of, of this accident. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a... Was there a morning news show that you watched that? Finally, welcome, welcome. It feels good to object when testimony is getting unhinged. This is so leading. Was there a morning news show that you watched? <laughs> the, I, I don't have words for what's happening in court today. We're gonna uh, try to zoom, zoom and catch up to real time while they're at sidebar. I'm. I'm kind of flabbergasted with all of it. I keep realizing that I'm like leaning off screen the more I lean to the side, but I, oh. yeah, I, I want to hear more about the disagreement. We know we have those text messages. I don't know if we'll see any of them that they were fighting over Sarah Zachary's uh, negligent discharge of the weapon. Did you, uh, did you see a, a morning news show? We're going to, I have seen one. Um, I'm talking about a morning news show uh, where Mr. She's, Bowles and Mr. Reed were the guests. She is really trying to um, to lead this witness because he is not picking up what she's putting down. Like she tries to go one direction and he's like, oh, oh. so now she's trying to narrow him down to a interview with Thel Reed and Mr. Bowles. Why did they do that interview? And we're going to have to see that at some point. Yes, I do remember that. Do and you really remember it, or are you just going along with what she said? Did about their says? statements on that morning news show cause you to believe that you were perhaps being targeted or blamed? That's, that's leading. No, if it's no, just say no then. That's difficult to answer. It, it. Why? It started to uh, feel as a is. Uh, I don't know if that's an appropriate word. It started to feel. Knowing Thale and, and having been friends with him for a few years at that point, I understood who he was and how much he loves his daughter. Um, so I felt like what was about to happen, that was the very beginning. Can you explain was what the fuck you mean? To ultimately try to pin the live ammunition on the set of rust that somehow it came, you know, through me. Okay. And Mr. Kinney, um, we got there. Did Ms. Gutierrez, with the assistance of Mr. Bowles, file a lawsuit against you? Objection. They did. It's uh, give or take a couple of days, January twelfth. That uh, lawsuit is spicy as fuck too. And when the lawsuit was filed against you, uh, at that point in time, did you 
fully understand that you were being blamed? At that point, it was quite clear. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what is the status of that lawsuit now? Well, the, the complaint. Now we've got an objection from Mr. Bowles about the status of the lawsuit. Um, let's see if we get into this. It, the lawsuit is f fucking feisty. Um, I didn't go back and look to see that Mr. Bowles is the one who filed that civil lawsuit. Um, we're gonna try. We're gonna get caught up to real time real quick here with all these sidebars. Oh boy, I want to hear more about the lawsuit. Let's talk more about that. Uh, Mr. Kenny, was that lawsuit later dismissed? It was. It was. I'll pass the witness. I've already covered that lawsuit. She didn't ask him anything about immunity, which I hate if he does have an immunity deal. Maybe he doesn't. The defense will ask. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Kenny. Good morning. We've met over Zoom, but we've never officially met. So for those of you asking about Thel Reed, it's my understanding that Thel is Hannah's stepfather. So whatever Seth Kinney might have said, it's it is what it is chad i will remind you that no matter how annoying and distasteful witnesses are um we appreciate the no name calling rules in the chat we maintain that for everyone even james spears and if we can do that for james spears we can do that for every witness and focus on what they said how they how they present um without name calling because you're lawnards and you can do that thank you so the much person, until this morning is that correct sir yeah okay mr kenny i want to walk you through uh, to start with the we have a lot of three set, and I think initially, oh God, don't just repeat Reed the direct examination. Brought live rounds in a green ammo can. Is that correct? That's correct. They were, we're just yeah, going to recreate reloads, the yes. morning. And these Great. were reloads, and some percentage of them were Starline brass reloads. Is that correct? Yes, I think it, I would just guess a good percentage, roughly 50% of the cases were Starline. Now, I think you described previously that there were three uh, types of bullet characteristics within those uh, reloads. Is that correct, sir? That is. And we tell the jury what type, what three types of reloads there were. So again, if we, if we consider that a round of ammunition has four components, and, and commonly people say bullets, in what they were referring to is a is a, a total cartridge. I think cartridge, that's fair. Right, but the bullet is actually the projectile, that single component, which essentially is flying towards whatever target. And Thale had had brought um, forty-five Colt reloads um, that had that were made up roughly of, of uh, almost equal thirds, you know, and it was a third, what, what are called semi-wad cutters. The tip of those, of those, uh, of that projectile sh is shaped exactly like a crayon. It has the exact shape of a, of a newly unused crayon. Um, then there was another bullet profile, a truncated cone, which kind of has a, a spaceship look to it. Uh, we saw the wall. And then there was the common, more common and typical found um, heavy grain bullet, which is, I, th I think, probably what most people would assume is a bullet when, when they do that. And it just looks like a lump of clay. Uh, uh, and it could be, there are slight variations to those shapes, but it could look like a human head, essentially, that was circular on, uh, all the way around the sphere. The okay, kind of uh, like a rounded kind of... Yeah, and they. Uh, the state's theory is that Thel gave the leftover ammo to Hannah. Again, forty-five ammo was hard to get. Forty-five dummy rounds were hard to get. They were in the middle of shooting eighteen eighty-three, where they this prop house was entirely out of stock for that other filming. Um, so they are reusing things. That isn't uncommon that things are getting reused and sent from one prop house to another or from one armor to another. That doesn't seem to be unusual. It's whether or not they got checked. So yes, they are trying to say that the um, mixed drum of stuff from Thel Reed got to Hannah and then Hannah brought it onto this set because the gunpowder at the end of the day is different. I'm, I'm frustrated with Seth Kinney. I've got a lot more questions about that conversation with Sarah Zachary, but the chemical analysis of the gunpowder seems like pretty strong evidence to me. Whether we like his testimony or not, whether we like his demeanor or not, whether the text is weird as hell or not, the chemical analysis of the gunpowder is uh, is just, you know, pretty, pretty basic evidence. And she still needed to check the rounds no matter how they got onto set. But this is starting to answer how they got onto set. Even with a flat point on them. But they, but they seem to be Brittany, those no, round the gunpowder was not flat white. point 
uh, no, versions all seem to be roughly the same. I, I didn't see any variations in those, but I but honestly, I just don't recall. I just remember that there were three different type profiles. And the issue that we ran into was that we uh, they were shooting both lever action rifles and uh, revolvers at the at the shooting range, um, and specifically, I grouped the the each different bullet profile into separate boxes and told the guys that were manning uh, the, the prop master in a live fire armor that they had brought on uh, and, the, and they had an assistant as well that the, uh, that the semi-wad cutters would not chamber in the lever action rifles. Um, mm -hmm. So best to use those in the revolvers and ideally the truncated cone and then the rounded bullets, those could be used in the lever actions. And ultimately somebody put a, a semi-wad cutter in one of the lever actions and jammed it up. Okay, well, in any event, there's three types of bullet characteristics. That did happen. That they'll read gets from Joe Swanson, correct? That, that, from what I saw, yes. Okay. Now, you all have this live training uh, offset. It's at a cowboy training camp in Texas in 1883, correct? Correct. It was, it was nowhere anywhere near a set. It was on, again, Taylor, Taylor Sheridan had set up a, a, a private firing range, live fire area, and no filming was uh, done at that point. Okay, sir, then after that said, you then Just, this retain witness needs to the ammo can in the remainder of the live rounds. Like expert witnesses, he's trying to over-explain. He needs to just answer what he's being asked, but he's trying to explain, no, this was all fine, instead of just answering what he's asked. But I don't know if this defense attorney is going to rein him back in and nail him down to answer just what's asked, as opposed to letting him continue to do the things that Thel had brought, correct? No. I, re I retained the, um, the Thel read, yeah, the, the reloads from Thel, but the ammo can was sent once, once the, no. the, uh, the first I saw of, of what was the contents of the ammo can was actually at the firing range on Texas. And at that point, we needed to know how many we had and what variety, because when I opened up the box, it was a jumbled, you know, mm -hmm. distribution of three different types of bullet profiles. So what I did is, is previously I got from Joe Swanson uh, 10 uh, boxes that were so. flat, brand new. Uh, they actually had to be assembled. And I loaded the contents from the green ammo box that Thale had brought into those white boxes. Those white boxes went up to the firing line as well as the empty ammo can. And the ammo can was being used for the empty, the spent brass. Okay. So to recycle it, you did retain some of the reloaded live rounds reloaded. after 1883 completed. After the 1883 Cowboy Training Camp, yes. And those I agree that Cowboy Training Camp sounds like fun, y'all. I agree with Crumbs, you. Correct? Yes. And you don't know whether those returned, I think you've stated before October 21st. You said you were hazy on the date, right? Yes. But we do know that you came back to Albuquerque from 1883 on or about October 11th uh, because you met with Sarah Zachary October 12th, correct? Correct. So when you came back, you brought dummy rounds from the set of 1883 to give to Sarah, correct? Correct. And those were 45 long Colt dummy rounds? Correct. Now, you had a whole group of dummies in 1883. Was How many do you think there were? 5,000. Okay. So out of those 5,000, you brought some back from 5, the 5,000 is a lot. Um, and at some point, you can't tell the jury when, those live rounds came back to your place. I've never been able to identify the exact date. Well, you also said on direct, they were delivered back. Wouldn't it uh, just be in your phone? Let me get to the words you used. They were offloaded from your Sprinter van and got moved back to Albuquerque in the bathroom. Is mm -hmm. that right? That's correct. And when you said got moved, isn't that you who moved them back? Yes. Okay. So in reality, you drove them back from 1883 and you can't remember that date at all. No. I, I ballpark it, but it's not. It's not accurate. I, I, can, I have an idea of, of within months or two, or even, did, you know, I can't, I can't tell you because I made at least two trips back and forth um, from Texas to Albuquerque, California, back again. It's just, I've just not been able to, to narrow it down. He's like, there was just too much. And, um, when you were sitting down with Hancock in one of these times and sit down with the calendar and try to look at your trip receipts, look at any kind of credit card, try to figure that out? Yes. Uh, repeatedly, I've I've probably tried the three to five times to see if I can come up with a picture of uh, either the space in you know PDQ space in Albuquerque, something that would indicate when I had brought those back. Uh, I've just been able. He's like, I just don't remember. Yeah. 
Uh, you said that you and brought he these bats to remember because he made so many trips back that and that forth. Could be a concerning situation if live rounds are stored in the same place as dummies. Is that is that fair? Yeah, that's, that's fair. what he said. Okay. And the reason why you, you said that on direct is that dummies are made to look identical in a lot of respects well, to libraries. Okay, he yes. can't check his phone while he's on uh, the stand. You also had within your place uh, <laughs> Pamper blanks. Pamper Shelley, thank Correct, you for the correct. super chat. Okay. Why would you store live ammo at PDQ at, at all? Good question. Well, I've got, you know, self-defense ammunition. Um, why? You know, it's Albuquerque after all, and that's enough right there. Um, and, you know, I, I deal with weapons that should not be out on the streets um, and, I'm, and I'll do what I have to to prevent that from happening uh, that got aggressive quickly reality. so there are there is self-defense ammunition and um, it, the remnants of the 1883 cowboy training camp was there and I, again don't know the date that I brought them back okay now you um, you keep self-defense ammunition it's because it's a dangerous town I think that's what you're saying and you also keep weapons we've seen in pictures that were out kind of out in the open Looks like there were cases. You recall that from the evidence photos? Yes. Well, you're seeing what I want anybody to see that would break in. If you know, because again, it's Albuquerque. If somebody were break in, what are they going to go after first? That's what it's set up as. What you don't see in the evidence photos: belt-fed machine guns, any machine guns, or a lot of other things that what? were there that are no longer there. What? Okay, so you had belt-fed machine guns too? What? Oh, and machine guns at, at this shop as well? Yes. Okay. So you wanted to people to see the... His testimony seems to be the shit show that you see in all the evidence photos is by design so that if people break in to my place in Albuquerque, it, what they see is, is that shit show and not belt fed machine guns okay uh, okay uh, okay uh and let me just show you defendants that Is seems to be the testimony thank you that that seems to be what we're saying i think they're going to get into the photos of his shit show i mean uh prop house and if you could um describe is this a picture inside pdq props it is okay sir can you tell the jury uh, these items what type of Firearms, those are? Well, they look to be long arms, obviously, because because of, of the length. But they, they do look to be long. What's sir. inside those gun socks is a mystery. It could be anything from replicas, non-functioning shotguns. When you run a prop house, I've never run a prop house, but you are being shown a picture of your prop house that has weapons everywhere, weapons that are used on movie set, but they are weapons that can have ammo loaded into them and can be shot. It concerns me when you're looking at a photo of your own place and you're like, could be anything. No idea what's in there. No idea what's in my shop. I don't know. They're long guns of some sort. Who the fuck knows? We're all gonna find out together. I I, I think I have my purses inventoried better than this. Um, I'm continually stunned by what this man is doing. Um. He's, he's very in face. Could so be anything. These were there on October 21st. Are you Could be anything. No idea. don't know what was inside those socks? Meh. Definitely not. I have hundreds of guns. Hundreds of guns. How would you know if any were missing? hundreds of guns inside PDQ props? Or yeah, as well as, as replica and rubber as well. And then and replicas are, they look exactly like a gun, uh, but they are not. He's like, it's just stuff's um, everywhere. And if I, that's not, is, how do we know that's October 21st, first of all? That shouldn't be. Not enough. October 21st. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm getting my date. Yeah, thanks for the month. Okay. This was the month after in November. This is search warrant photos. Yes. Yeah. I apologize. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So that was in November. Um, Mr. Kinney, what is this on the... Oh, the battle of the wills with these the two is going to be... Everything in this room are going to be blanks or dummy rounds. Interesting. Okay, and I see them kind of laying in bags on the, the ground. Is that correct? Yes. So did you have any kind of... Oh, first of all, let me before I ask you that. You have a, a lot of boxes stacked up on the um, the shelves here. Do you see that? Yes, and that, that shelf holds um, entirely uh, blanks. Rob, that's what he said. Rob said, hold up, did, the did pizza boxes any were sort of really a plan to fool people to break in, to make them believe all your boxes there was nothing of value. That's what he said. Occasionally, I would go through and, exactly. and make a list of what I had. It was it was casual. You know, what do I need? You know, Swanson, Joe Swanson would say, hey, I'm, I'm running off a 
a batch of two, two, three blanks and, uh, or. It makes me uncomfortable that he has live ammo and guns and he describes his inventory system as casual. That, um, or that makes me MM, nervous. Uh, whatever it was. And, and if I was on the road, it would be helpful to kind of have an idea about that. But there was, there's no spreadsheet of, of inventory that I kept. Okay, and when you say casual, was it was this kind of was it written on a piece of paper? It was. It was eight and a half by eleven. I would end up, uh, you know, with two or three eight and a half by elevens because it's not only we're not just talking about you know nine millimeter, right? We're talking about nine millimeter that is going to be what we use in the industry. Anything from a, a solid plug load, and in a solid plug load, you can have 10, 10 variations, and then we have eight flash, sir. Quarter we flash, don't give a shit flash, about solid flash. plug so, loads. Um, you had to know what your inventory is by memory for the most part. And occasionally, you know, if, if inventory got too high in one area, I'd say, well, definitely don't. You know, if Joe says, hey, do you need any of this? I'd respond, no, because it, it just doesn't make sense from a small business standpoint. For the casual and, and inventory. You said, um, inventory uh, through memory. Um, I'm going to show you Defendant's L16. It's just one example. Oh, were, were you able to remember at any given time each number of each of those types of boxes? Well, when I'm, if I'm handling it on a daily basis, yes. Deficiencies mostly. Well, and for example, when you have to invoice, um, like the rest said, um, do you have any procedure that kind of tells you how you're going to invoice that? Typically what I'll do is, is very quickly, uh, usually movie productions, television productions are last minute. And oftentimes the invoicing That's become, a fact. You know, comes a week or two after the service has been provided. Things are uh, last And minute. so oftentimes I'll quickly jot down what it is that's being sent, take a picture of it, and oftentimes things go, you know, if they're shipped, everything goes overnight. So it's it's a last minute kind of business. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? I'll show this. All right, we're approaching for some additional no, photos. I do. No, that's okay. What are those documents? This is an invoice uh, made out to Russ Production uh, with Sarah Zachary here as well. And which, He's going to throw that in, right? You just looked at and see what the sticker number is uh, on the back of the page. With Sarah Zachary there as well. Over. The distancing is incredible. He's like, just like, hey, not me, not me, yeah, not me, not me. FF, does that say that? This is FF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just read for the record from FF, and what is EE? The other exhibit? No, I was just going to ask to move them in, Your Honor. Just Correct. To identify EE. -E. Okay. So FF. The issue was he's reading things off the documents, and the court's like, these aren't evidence yet. And he's like, no, I'm going to ask to admit them. But he's still not done identifying them because the defense didn't ask him to identify each of them yet. So that's where we're at. There's an invoice for uh, blink ammunition as well as dummy rounds. Okay, and is that your invoice, sir? Yes, it is. And is it the same for EE? -E? If you could take a look at that. And this EE is an invoice. Yes, who for knew this was a new, um, a new system of of uh, anti theft guns, production replicas, or theft protection. Uh, rubber guns. So just leave your house messy. That's gun what bags saying. and socks. Okay, don't, and not get into the kind of you just recognize that. Do you know? Excuse I do. me, yeah. sir. With the gun bags, did you provide those two exhibits? A Mary K bag. EE -E and FF are admitted. You may publish. Thank you, Defendants. So, Mr. Kenny, I'm first going to show you defendant's EE, -E, and you just tell them the Good to see you, Jen. Uh, just, uh, can you just summarize this and don't go into every item? Sure. This is the um, gun, replica, and rubber invoice to the Rust Production from PDQ. Mr. Bulls, I'll be The attorneys are chatting with each other. Yes. Over what the exhibits are. I don't know... I, I guess we'll see. We're gonna catch up to real time real fast here. Here, I need to switch us back to one uh, to normal speed because we are we are almost caught up. As they're going over these invoices, and once we're caught up to real time, when they break, hey, uh, we're hosed. Mr. Kenny, if you can just summarize that uh, for the jury. So that invoice is from PDQ to the rest production for firearms, replica firearms, as well as rubber firearms. Okay. Okay, and now I want to show you, and this is what you, and the one we just saw, this is what you uh, supplied to rest, correct? Correct. Okay. Now I want to show you 
Defendants FF. Yes, chat. We're at the rubber invoice. And Just you can don't ask the wrangler again about it. It's a um, invoice from PDQ to Rust Production for blanks, blank ammunition, as well as dummy rounds. Okay. All right, chat. Well, they're going through the invoices. Second page of that. Wish me luck in having time to get and to the what restroom. What does that say in the second page? Um, why did everything just go blank? Why did the feed just go blank? I say I'm going to go to the restroom. That doesn't mean the feed goes blank. What in the, what in the ever loving? Give me one second, chat. This was not an EDB issue. This was a very strange timing coincidence that the feed just went completely black. So I'm going to have to either restart this feed or go find an, oh, the feed has ended. Why did the feed end? I'm going to go find us another feed. Um, real, real quick. That's, uh, that's real frustrating. Um, so give me a second because now we've got to, we've got to go back to one of the mono feeds. Um, I know. Oh, I feel like it was like, no girl, what you're not going to do is use the restroom. I'm sorry. We're going back to a feed that has, um, mono. I apologize, but the feed we were using stopped and, um, the feed we were using does not have the rest of this testimony, which is really annoying. So and noted that that's not a feed we'll be using in the future. So you, you started your dummy rounds, 44, 40, 45, then there's a number 200. All right. Is let's, that um, that this. is the quantity. And then there, the price per item is right next to that. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So they are now putting up the invoices on the screen they, as we're doing this. So these, um, these dummy 45 and other dummies, did you rent these to Rust? I did. What was listed there is not inclusive of actually what was provided to set. Um, there were some, as I recall, there were some 44 Henry dummy rounds. Um, possibly some 4570 i don't recall exactly uh so w were there other invoices no okay so there were certain items that you did not invoice for that's correct okay and that did that also include um what's called primed cases no prime cases would cases would not be uh, in a in the dummy round line of the invoice that would be that would be listed out separately because one is one is a consumable uh, the other one is a rental and prime cases would be a consumable and I want to talk a little bit about that but you provided Sarah Zachary some primed cases for rust correct not that I recall I mean I'd have to look at the invoice What is a primed case? A prime case is is, is simply that it, it's um, it's a ammunition case that has a primer uh, without gunpowder. Um, typically, they Joe Swanson crimps the end uh, because what happens is that they're too long. If he doesn't crimp the end, they're too longer to actually be functional in a revolver. Um, and they're, they're simply, you know, like a loud cap gun when they go off. Uh, they're good for training. Uh, they're good for uh, around horses and kids. Uh, and certain armors will rig them up in theater as well. Live theater will use them with talcum powder um, for an effect with minimal noise and for also for close proximity. Do you recall telling um, Detective Hancock when you interviewed with her that you had given a number of prime cases to Sarah and it will be interesting to see what color primers they have? No, I don't recall that. If I showed you your interview transcript, would that refresh? It, it would help, yeah. yeah. It's page 32. So it looks like we are still going through not just the interviews but the invoices about what he provided, what he didn't provide because the prosecution is trying to say Hannah brought the live rounds onto set and that's part of her being reckless and negligent and doing her job. And the defense hasn't asked him about a deal to testify at all, so I guess we'll see if that actually exists. But the prosecution seems convinced that the live rounds on set did not come from PDQ Arm and Prop, and that's why they, he wasn't charged, because they seem pretty confident that it didn't come from there. 
Um, Ville asked, did I try long crime? No, they run a ton of ads in their lower third. And um, so no, I'm not um, because I'm not putting the ads in my lower third. That's their choice, but no, not for me. Sam says all firearms should be kept in a secure gun safe. Surely one would, one would, one would think that, um, especially since he was talking about Albuquerque not being detail, safe. He did Hancock, say he didn't invoice for everything. Prime cases so to weird. Well, it's interesting because it, it says prime cases, and that I would have said primed. Um, I, I never say prime cases. It just sounds like you're ordering some off of Amazon. Uh, I mean so that's fair when we're talking about prime, but this is very confusing. I don't recall that conversation. I'm not. I'm not. I don't even know what I'm referring to in that uh, in that conversation. Well, do you recall that there was discussion about um, those being there, and that you looked for a picture to show Hancock? No, I don't remember. Okay. Do you recall stating that chances are they'll all have the same color primer? Mm -hmm. I, this conversation, I just don't remember the particulars of this okay, conversation. Okay, then would it refresh your recollection to read this? Because that's what he's going to ask. But do you recall at all, regardless of the conversation, How is this defense attorney Sarah not Zachary ready to just impeach him on that? Cases on the set of rest? Ask him if it would refresh his recollection. If they're on the invoice... And it's and it's a, a a dummy or excuse me, it's a blank round, and I would include a primed case in a dummy. He did, and he didn't remember. Round invoice. He's got to see the whole um, thing though. Because again, it's it's a consumable. Let me game this up a little more. Um, I would not be surprised if if they got prime case uh, blanks. Let's call them. Well, sir, don't you know that? Don't you know you provided that to, to Sarah Zachary? No, it was two over what two and a half years ago. But this was a, I mean, traumatic. Don't event you know that? You no. Talked to uh, you. You you remember that, don't you? I remember it being traumatic. Yes, no, you absolutely. Remember, you remember providing those cases because you discuss it for five pages in this. He no, said no remember. multiple times. Do you recall during this conversation as well that you called a man named Troy Teske? I've called Troy Teske a number of times in the last six years. I'm, I'm asking you specifically, during the interview with Detective Hancock, November 1st, do you recall that you, in, to, you called Troy Teske? In the interview room, yes, with, okay. with Detective, at the, yeah, the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office, yes. Yes, because he was at lunch. You called I don't know him, if Seth has immunity. The defense I, yes, hasn't no, asked I, about I it understand what you're talking at all. About. Okay. They're trying and to nail him down on whether he remembers or doesn't Joe remember Swanson. something he said to the detective well, as that's as not going well. With the detective, I do. So we don't know. And do you recall when you asked Joe Swanson whether he had put these in boxes, uh, how many rounds he had made in total? He said about seven hundred. Uh, is what you said. Do you recall saying that he had made about seven hundred rounds? I have a vague recollection of of the conversation with okay. with Detective Hancock. Yeah. And as you're talking to Joe Swanson and you ask him if they were in the box or the green ammo can, do you recall he's on the phone with you and you're asking if they were in the green ammo can and you say, Shh. The hearsay with regard to the phone conversation is what she's getting at. You guys, for those of you that we are back in mono stereo, I'm sorry that we're back in mono. That is what we've got from the feeds out of court today. Um, and I don't have my uh, own feet at this Kenny, point. Do so, you recall here we you are. said, as you're on the phone, shit, shit, shit. He I'm probably like, said shit a oh lot. Oh, God. Well, I mean, still trying. Damn. You recall saying that? Vaguely, yes. You also recall saying, uh, you said it twice. He said, shit, shit, shit. Well, she still didn't do her effing job. You recall saying why is the defense introducing that this witness said shit 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 she still didn't do her fucking job i or her effing job i think they're trying to show that maybe he's thinking that the ammo came from him but these attorneys just want to say shit in court and uh that's what he's doing he's gonna say shit 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 as much as he possibly can apparently so shit let's see what happens saying that that sounds like me yeah. that sounds like so, me is not 
a yes when or you no find answer, out, sir. And I don't want to get into what Mr. Swanson told you, but when you find out whatever you find out on the phone, you say shit, shit, shit twice. Mm. Why did you say that? I think I was worried that it was going to be some of these rounds that that Thale had given to Troy Teske and had been using, um, you know, to shoot, right, shooting live rounds, that somehow they migrated in in some of Thale's leather or... Um, I mean, it's not birds. You know, through Hannah. They're rounds of ammunition. Some way, they don't just that, again, we were going to be here saying Joe Swanson live live ammunition when he's primarily 99.9% .9 of the time he just provides movies and television shows with blanks and dummy rounds. And that's an uncomfortable situation for Joe Swanson. So you just gave a long explanation and you just. About Joe Swanson uh, and nothing about you. Talk blamed, to the tried to blame Hannah in that, didn't you just now? How did I do that? I well, you, you gave the implication Jesus. that you were worried that this was going to be some that Bill had and Troy was shooting. And, and again, that, that's to try to link it to Hannah, isn't it? No. no okay. just, he does just blame Hannah. telling you my thought process at that point, trying to figure out where did, this, where did the rust live ammunition come from and was it going to you know, point back to Joe Swanson? Okay, Wait, and do you recall Joe Swanson or do you? Because you're the ones who you're the one who provided stuff at Rust. I really hope we're getting to the the point of this cross where they're nailing him down. You wanted to make sure this wasn't pinned on you, right? Because you provided live ammo to the set, right? Those are going to be the questions that are coming or should on be. On July 11, 2023, you interviewed with myself and Miss Morrissey. Uh, you call that, sir? Yeah, the the Zoom meeting. Yes, I recall that. And do you recall when I asked you the same question, shit, 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 why did you say shit, shit, shit? You said, I don't know. And that was the extent of your answer. You recall that? Yes. So back in July 11, 2023, your memory, would you agree with me, would be fresher to that time frame when you said it than it would be now? Well, not if, if I had reviewed things or, or something else jogged my badly. memory of that event or, you know, because it was a highly, it was a, an emotional time and that, the you know, I found that largely when things are emotionally charged, um, there, there kind of needs to be uh, some kind of gateway between the present and recollecting how I felt and, and the way things were at that point in time. And, and I understand, but you would you agree with me, you gave a different answer on July 11th, I don't know, than you do today. Yes, I those are different if, answers. I don't know is really an answer, other than at that moment in time after us discussing okay. it, I hadn't thought about saying like, at that point, I did not know. shit four times in an interview with a detective. The rounds, again, that went to 1883 came back at some point to your place. Again, some of those reloaded rounds from Joe Swanson were Starline Brass. So the, the 1883 Cowboy Camp, training camp, just to be specific, yes, some of those Thale Reed, Joe Swanson reloads came back to PDQ in Albuquerque. Notice how and he keeps trying to tie well, them to Hannah's stepdad. Uh, some of your dummy rounds also were Starline Brass, correct? Correct. And they had nickel primers? Correct. Okay. And the live rounds found on set that were Starline Brass also had nickel primers, correct? On the set of rust? Yes, sir. From the evidence photos, yes, those were nickel primers. As well? Yes. Okay. And I don't in have a to fell read counter today, but we need one. Arms, did you put provide rubber quite a lot. to the set? To the set of rust, yes. Okay. Did you provide uh, over 3,000 rounds of ammo? To rust? I don't know what the total of, if we're referring to bl uh, blanks. Bl to, yeah, yeah, blanks, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the total is of blanks to rust. I've never totaled it out. Uh, well, other than the invoice, that would have been the only time. Okay. When you okay. would get a request from Sarah Zachary uh, for additional rounds that were needed, would she come pick those up from you at your place? 
I think once uh, once the initial supply of blanks and uh, and firearms were provided to to Sarah, there was only one other occasion that I can recall Sarah coming and getting anything for Rust from me, which was on October twelfth. Okay, and do so you he's recall trying to say Sarah that those extra rounds got on set October twelfth. Before Rust started to your place. Not I do. The 21st. And at that time, didn't you give Hannah her leathers, as well as firearms and ammunition? I, yeah, I vaguely recall that, uh, yeah, that she got that done. Because, in fact, Hannah had mailed you uh, the leathers back from the old way at the end of that set. you recall that? Yeah, she had shipped uh, everything from Montana to uh, me in, uh, me yes in Texas. Is that a yes or a no? And so when you received those in Texas and the leathers and everything else, you brought them back to PDQ Props? That's correct. They uh, were, the leathers were in the same box. They never got pulled out. They're um, yes or no's. The replica firearms did get pulled out, but the rest of the leathers remained in the box. Okay, sir. Then you gave that to uh, Sarah and Hannah for their use on the rest set. Is that fair to say? Well, whatever she was going to do with it was up to Hannah um, and Thale. Okay. Um, but you, do you know they got used on the rest set? I don't know that. I, I'm just, I can assume that's, that's where that leather went to. Okay. Now I want to ask you uh, some questions about He's the dressed. dummy rounds that you answered earlier. Circling around um, and around. You did indicate that dummies that do not rattle can be dangerous. Is that right? That's what he said. Dummy rounds that do not rattle are not dummy rounds to me. Okay. And I think you said because it, it is dangerous when an armor is trying to figure out maybe in a high-speed environment, maybe things are going on, you're trying to distinguish between a live round and a dummy, and it will not rattle. Uh, it doesn't rattle. Didn't you describe that as being a dangerous situation? He well, did. certainly, because you don't, you, it's like a firearm that you can't check is, is unloaded. You have to assume that it's loaded or that the, the round is live and it's not a dummy round. Yes, sir. And you also stated that you would not source those type of rounds like Denix rounds that do not rattle, right? That's correct. And it's well, one of the things said you said load. that you would not be in favor of having a mixture of dummies, some that rattle, some that don't. That's a dangerous situation, isn't it? Well, it's, it's you know, I work with with prop crews a lot. They're not specialists, they're not armorers, but they are charged with the responsibility of having gun belts and dummy rounds on set. And if they get the idea that dummy rounds don't necessarily have to rattle, bad precedent, deadly precedent. It sets a deadly precedent, and on this set on Rust, you're aware that there were those types of a mixture of different types of dummy rounds, are you not? Well, saying? I I'm not a I wasn't aware of that. that because well, you weren't before, but you are now, having reviewed the pictures. Yeah, the Denix round is a costume round that doesn't rattle. Okay. So, after you reviewed the pictures from set, you're now aware that there was a dangerous mix of types of dummies, some that rattle, some that didn't. Well, a Denix round is not dangerous. It sets oh a, a dangerous precedent. Okay. You know, and I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying you can fire it. He's trying I'm just saying, to... in your words, it can set a dangerous precedent. Yeah, is it's, right? yes, it's not. The, this is just asked and answered, asked and answered, asked and answered. The witness is trying to be precise. The defense attorney is trying to say, this is on production, this is on everybody else, this is on this. It's just, they're trying to narrow it down, but, but each of them wants to over explain to the other one, and it's just the most frustrating questioning because the witness just wants to keep explaining and not just answering yes or no, which makes it very confusing. And the defense hasn't nailed him down to be like, it was a yes or no question. You have not answered my question. I don't know why this defense attorney who sued this, this individual, this defense attorney sued this witness is coming in less hot than he was for Ross Adiago. Like, I just don't understand the theory here. I don't understand the strategy. I don't understand the fact that he's not impeaching him on anything. And he's like, do you remember? And he's like, no. And then they just like move on. It's so odd. Not an ideal situation, <laughs> not, not at all. Okay, sir, I want to talk about your, so odd. your interactions with Detective Hancock in this case. And then the court the audio is in mono. You recall you had a, delightful. Um, 
meeting or call with her maybe the same day as the shooting incident? No, I don't. I don't. With Detective Hancock? Yes. On the, on October 21st? Mm -hmm. Don't recall it at all. I don't think it happened. Okay. Do you recall that you on don't the think it happened, course of time after that Those shooting are different incident, things. you called Detective Hancock over 40 times? Yeah, it sounds about right. Do you think it might have been higher than that? Oh, definitely. Okay. Oh, um, really? You think you called the lead time, detective you're more than 40 information times? information with her. She's sharing information with you. Is that correct? Yes. It's a okay. lot of phone calls. And did she share you materials from Wait, the investigation? Wait, excuse me. At times? Excuse me. Lead detective? I'm going to... I'm going to... I got questions about the arm... I've got questions about the arm tattoo. I, I have a lot of questions. I have arm tattoos. But I need to know what it says because I have, I'm now distracted. The first time that I think she showed me anything That's Detective was Hancock. when they were executing the search warrant on the prop rock. She was showing me, I think they were black and white grainy photos. Okay. That was the first time I saw anything. Now, do you recall providing uh, Detective the lead Hancock some the courtroom. of the live She's rounds before She's the, lead detective. the execution of the search warrant? I did. Okay. But now I wouldn't know what so her So you provided says. her some, and was that in a bag, or how did you give those to her? Well, interestingly enough, they came from that jammed lever-action rifle, and they happened to be uh, the semi-wad cutter live rounds. Uh, they were in a small Benelli shotgun choke bag, and I had written on there in, in black ink live, and there were between five and seven. There's believe, live rounds just in a bag? Okay, and you, you volunteered those to her, and, and she took them, then they came to search after that, is that right? That's correct. Okay. You know and what again, they haven't... It was a month time. You know what they haven't asked this witness about? Why he had all the text messages between Hannah and her lawyers and stuff. Like, they haven't even gotten to, you wanted to read all the text messages in this case. I don't even know if he's going to ask, but I really want to know. But a witness calling a lead detective more, because his face was like, oh no, more. More than 40 times is... Uh, it's, it seems like a lot to me. Time frame or so, roughly, between the shooting incident and that search of your place. Yeah, I believe it was over a month. Because it, it was after Thanksgiving. So, yeah, over a month. Did, did you have any inkling or thought that they were going to come search? No, not at all. Even though you had been in contact with the detective and other people before that? You knew they were investigating? I knew they were investigating. I had no reason to believe that they would be executing a search warrant on my business. Now, did you provide your DNA really, to Detective sir? Hancock? No, I really? didn't offer it, though. You offered it? Yes. And they did not take you up on that? That's correct. Um, and they did not take your fingerprints either, did they? Well, my fingerprints are in the system already. Um, through the, if you're a federal firearms through licensee, all the background checks. Yeah. that's just part of the licensing is that your, your fingerprints go into the, the digital federal system. And, and I understand that, sir, but my question was, did you, did they take your fingerprints? Again? No. Okay. Well, they didn't take it the first time. That was somebody else. That's true. Okay. Um, now, I want to ask you uh, a different topic. After this, you were asked on, on direct if after this October 16th accidental discharge, I just, you had had an argument with I wanted, uh, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed. Do you recall that? I want to know about the phone calls. text message, yes. I want to yeah. know about the text. And you recall after that that you wanted to fire Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? He and Sarah it had a conversation about that. It wasn't that I wanted her that. fired uh, because it wouldn't be for me to fire her. Um, she can tell me to go to hell all day long, and it, it wouldn't make a difference to the rust production. Um, it doesn't, you know, I've got five sisters and two daughters. I'm used to it. Um, so... If the rust production is happy and they were... You know, they, Sarah Zachary said she's a great armor. Uh, that I've seen the she, the defendant Hannah. She sent me the text message that the director had sent her after a big shootout on blank ammo shootout. Big, big and, shootout. And Mr. Kinney, I, 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 that my question was yes, pretty he's, simple. Okay, he's wandered again. away. Um, 
you, you just testified that you did not want to. Is he answering get, the questions? Did, you did not no, want to fire Hannah? He's not answering the questions. Is that your testimony? It's, it's not that I wanted her fired. She it's was doing that. a horrible job at props. That was an issue. Um, okay, you answered my question, and I, I just want to know, it's a, it's a real... It, I, I had mixed feelings about it, and okay. I think that's why, you know, in fact, I reached out to two common friends with Thale saying this is the situation, you know. Okay, well, did, do you recall in your interview on November 1st stating she was just being an idiot. I wanted I wanted Sarah to get rid of her. Collectively, yes. I mean, you know, even now, frustrated with her. The defense attorney time, said. You know. The defense attorney said, "Do you remember your statement that she was just being an idiot and we wanted to get rid of her?" And he's like, "Well, collectively, yes." Answer the questions being asked of you like the evasiveness is so frustrating and then the defense attorney i am ready for the defense attorney to pin him down no you said this and we're not getting him pinned down either so it's just wandering and meandering and there's no actual answers anywhere in this and it's so frustrating but he was supposed to be the supervising armorer on this set that's what it said in all the lawsuits and that's what has been relayed multiple times through court that he was a supervising armorer. I, this testimony is so painful to sit through. Just answer. I understand, well, you know, what she's up against. So it, it's a mixed bag of emotions and, and, and ultimately was so not my fault. A bag of was, fucking was, words. Was, did you remember stating that? Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that's what I asked. Now, I see in the chat somebody said permission uh, to treat the witness as hostile. They don't need July permission. This is cross-examination. Cross well, I wasn't going to work with her again in the future. So you wanted her fired. Those aren't the same, counsel. He didn't want to work with her again. But those aren't the same. I just, again. It, it was a very it, long pause, sir. It was, there were some mixed emotions and uh, in the situation. If I wanted her, if I really wanted her fired, I could have gotten her fired. Huh. Let me ask you that. If you, um, ah, 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 no. I just, I just completely just was trying. <sighs> Your Honor, I'm trying. Um, I'm going to need to back up to where we were. You I, was, not I was pausing because this witness had previously said, I don't even have the power to get her fired. And now he's coming in with the... Well, yeah, I mean, if I wanted to get her fired, I could, which is what the defense attorney's trying to get at. So you could have had her fired. You could have kind of done whatever, but he's just talking in circles around the issue. So I'm going to try to get us back to right where we were in time um, on this because I had um, mis misfired my mouse, as it were, uh, trying to pause that so I could yell. Um, okay, yeah. So if we, if we have a little repeat testimony here, I apologize. That is... Uh, Oper operator error on the mobile setup. Answer Talk, my sir. question, and I I just want to know it's a, it's a real. It, I, I, I had mixed feelings about it, and okay. I think that's why you know. In fact, I reached out to so two backed up common a, friends with Fail, saying this is the situation. You know. Okay. Well, did do you recall in your interview on November first, stating she was just being an idiot? I wanted I wanted Sarah to get rid of her. Collectively, yes. I mean, you know, even now, frustrated with her, but at the same time, you know, understand, well, you know, what she's up against. So What is she up against? It, it's a mixed bag of emotions. And, more and, of that, and ultimately, it was so not my, my question call. Was, 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 did you remember stating that? Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that's what I asked. Oh, yeah. Totally said now, that. I'm surprised the defense didn't follow up on. Uh, do you also recall in the July 11th up? interview stating? I don't know if Mr. Bowles is listening to the answers, and I hope he circles back on this because he's saying, I understood everything she was up against. What was she up against? 
what was she up against on set? Like that seems like testimony the defense would want to elicit from this witness and he's not. And the defense made motions to get this case dismissed over this witness getting text messages and has asked none of it. Well, I wasn't going to work with her again in the future. So you wanted her fired. I just, again, it, it, it was, there were some mixed emotions and, uh, in the situation. If I wanted her, if I really wanted her fired, I could have gotten her fired. The, yes, the, the, you, the eyebrows. Um, you could have gotten her fired. You could have talked like, yeah, to yeah, I um, somebody on set. Who mm -hmm. was your contact on set? It would have been... Um, well, Gabrielle Pickle was uh, actually Angel Nijem was my first contact with a, with production at Rust. And then it was Gabrielle Pickle, um, line producer, unit production matter, manager, Ro Walters. Those would have been the ones to to fire her. Sarah was Sarah Zachary was she was willing to work with Hannah and, and get the movie finished. And approach. Yes. Um, I wonder why counsel's approaching, and I wonder if it's because this witness can't testify as to the feelings and impressions of another witness. But this is going to give us a minute to try to get caught back up to real time after I uh, misclicked. One o'clock. Wait. Please, um, why don't we see you back here at one o'clock? You're going to lunch? Um, what is happening in this courtroom? They're going to lunch. Oh, they're going to lunch. It's almost noon, so they're going to lunch. Okay. Um, why don't we see you back here at 1 o'clock? Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. It, the, the, the judge is like, I'm fucking done. We're going to lunch. So they're going to lunch. All right, well, that's what's happening this morning. All right, I'm gonna to get to questions as best as I can. We are going to have a feed up for you this afternoon. If we can find a feed that is in mono audio, we will, or in, in stereo audio, we will. If we cannot, it will be what we are getting out of court, which right now is mono, which is very frustrating. Um, so this afternoon I will be in the chat, but I am headed to the airport, so I will be in the chat with you guys. I will not be on screen, um, though I'm very tempted to pop in audio only if I can while I'm traveling. <laughs> I might be able to do that, but we'll see. So definitely won't be able to do that from an airplane. Um, so I'm going to um, answer a few questions. The chat will be here this afternoon. The mods will be here this afternoon. I will be in chat for most of the afternoon testimony because by the time I take off, I should be able to get most of the afternoon testimony. And then I will be back um, at home in my streaming setup tomorrow to cover all of this, hopefully in a smoother fa in a smoother fashion. Let's get to some of your questions real quick. Let's give a let's give a summary before we do that. It is the end of the morning session of day eight of the state versus Hannah Gutierrez. And this morning we had the one witness who was the woman from craft services who said Hannah Gutierrez handed her a Ziploc baggie with a small green Ziploc baggie inside it um, and said, can you hold this for me? And then later was texting her, can I get my stuff? And then on cross-examination, can I get my things? That woman is a recovering addict and said, I knew that this was cocaine um, and I threw it away in the trash in the hallway of the hotel. The defense on cross-examination said, but you don't know for sure it's cocaine. She goes, no, I don't, I don't know for sure. I thought that's what it was, but I'm a recovering addict. I didn't want anything to do with it. Threw it away. It's stuff I've seen before. Didn't want to do it. But the state never had that tested. So the evidence the state has as to the evidence tampering charge is the lovely woman from craft services saying she handed me a thing i thought it was this i threw it away i don't think that's enough to fly we'll see what this judge is going to do um i think that charge should be dismissed on the motion to, to dismiss when the state rests their case then the state recalled a witness to introduce some additional photos before they got to who I think will be their last witness, Seth Kinney. So far, his answers have been somewhat wandering, over explaining, and evasive. It's not been easy to follow testimony, but
but his core testimony in his direct examination was that he never provided any live ammo to the set of Rust and started talking about how Hannah Gutierrez's dad was working on this other set and the ammo could have gotten um, mixed in and given back to Hannah and Hannah would have brought it on the set. So that is really the heart of his testimony. The prosecution did not ask him if he had a plea deal. And so far the defense has not asked him if he's had an immunity deal, like you agreed to give testimony, he might not actually have an immunity deal because we are got at least halfway through cross-examination and we've heard nothing about it. We've heard about invoices and text messages and the fact that he wanted Hannah fired off this set, was, which was alleged in the civil lawsuit, but we've heard nothing about immunity. Will we see that after lunch? I don't know. I thought the defense would bring it up first and they sure didn't. Let's get to your questions. <music> So with all of that, you guys, just a reminder, if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm covering with when we're releasing summaries and all the rest of it, lawnardapp.com will best keep you in the loop. A.W. said the Seth Kinney phone calls to police are out online. They're really interesting. I think they're important to this trial. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the taped calls. I will give my thoughts if they play in court. They the prosecution didn't play them. I don't think the defense is going to play them. So if they don't play in court, then after trial, I will um, I will cover them with some of the other things that I have not covered. I'm waiting for it to come into evidence here. Um, so as she said, Emily, thank you for creating such a lovely educational and fun community. I love this community. Love to all the gifters, the mods, and the friendly lawnards. Thank you very much. Christina said, I read on a blind item gossip site that Alec might have a family reality show to create good PR before the trial. I I don't I don't think that's gonna go the way he he thinks it does. Um, but we've heard some of his recorded family interactions in the past. Um, I I don't think that's a great idea. Samantha said I have a question about the Dave Hall's plea deal. Why are we mad that he took a plea? No, I'm mad. I don't think we have to be mad. He took responsibility for his part. Am I missing something? They gave him a six month misdemeanor plea deal and I think it is um given who they are trying and what they are going to trial on it frustrates me dave halls was imminently responsible for this set he was slammed by osha he was the safety coordinator and he utterly failed to do his job do i think that is worth him getting to say i'm sorry and take a plea deal for six months of unsupervised probation or do i think it's more serious than that i think it's a little more serious than that if everybody's going to trial so it it his plea deal frustrates me um uh, white russia said emily i wish you feel better i don't feel badly I just don't do well in the desert with my voice and I do have a tendency to lose my voice, especially in dry environments. And then I went to concerts. So, you know, some of that's on me. Uh, Creek Native Girl said, is defense allowed to bring up the lawsuits against Sen Kinney's from others uh, that could play into his credibility? They probably will at the end. They've done it with everybody else. You're being sued about this, right? But they did bring up, the prosecution brought up, it's not helpful, the prosecution brought up that he is being, um, he was sued by this defense attorney. Does the prosecution think SK is their slam dunk? I don't know, and I don't think it is. Um, I think, again, I think they're trying to stave off the defense saying, well, the live rounds came on to set this way and the live rounds came on to set this way, but we all need to circle back to the fact that even if Seth Kenny put the live rounds on set, and even if he was prosecuted for that, it doesn't change Hannah's part. Hannah's part was to check everything before it ever got into a gun. So however it got onto set, she should have caught it. And that's what the expert armorer talked about. If, if she had been checking, she would have caught those live rounds. And that's ultimately what we're here for in this trial. Did she check the guns or not? So thank you guys for all the um, super chats. Don't like that he's skirting around the questions. He definitely is talking around the answers. He is not... Um, an easy witness to follow. And that's gonna read differently to different people. Question, is that a law nerd shirt you have on today? Love the color and thing. This is not, this is not a law nerd shirt that I have on today. This is just a sweater probably from Target. Um, Frankie's mom said he and the detective seem to have become quite friendly. I have no idea. She referred to him as Seth as not Mr. Kinney. Um, I, I'm not gonna speculate on that, but she referred to everyone by their first name that she talked about. So I'm not gonna read anything into that. I hope they show um, any of the many interviews. I don't know if they'll show any of Seth Kinney's interviews. The prosecution didn't. Um, 
Grace, his testimony has been um, frustrating to listen to. Spike can bite me, <laughs> said Safe Travels. Thank you so much for that. Um, talking too much to everyone makes it hard to keep up with what you said. To whom makes you look shady as heck? Uh, right to remain silent is real. Christy, I don't think Seth Kinney thought he had a right to remain silent. I think he wanted to make sure he wasn't going to be prosecuted. I think that's uh, where we're at with him. Um, Diana said, I really feel like he's trying to cover. It's, I, I really want to see what happens. Um, so do we know the jury makeup? It seems that they haven't swapped any jurors out, but I believe it was seven men and five women and then um, a number of alternates. So I see uh, the question in the chat about whether I have a Discord. We have an app, laundernapp.com. It's free on iOS and Android. Green ammo box, perhaps primer in Green Bay. <laughs> no, the green ammo box, I think we saw one of the ammo boxes photographed early, early on in this trial. If I were the jury, I would be too confused to get anything out of this testimony, totally zoned out. I think that's really fair. Um, his testimony has not been clear, and he's been fighting with both witnesses because he doesn't want to answer what's asked. He's giving – he. it seems to me he's trying to figure out the point of the question, not just the words of the question, and he's trying to head off whatever he perceives the point of the question to be or whatever he perceives, like, the gotcha moment to be. So instead of just asking what he – or answering what he's asked, he keeps talking around it. And it's, it's tremendously frustrating, and none of the lawyers are really, like, taking control of him. The defense is trying to, saying, that's not what I asked. I asked you this. But the, he, he's not an easy and clear witness. Elena, good to see you. Elena said, I'm so glad I left the office for lunch. I'm shouting in my car, objection, speculation. She's not an expert witness. Uh, the state has a really hard time, a really hard time with that, um, with that evidence, that tampering with evidence charge. It's a really bad charge. John said, I'm really surprised Hollywood does not have regulations for these prop houses standardizing dummy rounds. I don't I don't know Hollywood well enough to to tell you one way or the other, but it seems like you would want maybe a easier inventory. Moon Magic Mayhem Jen said, I think the most correct he's been is admitting he doesn't know what's going on. It goes further than he seems to intend. He, yeah, it's frustrating. Um, Marjorie said, Emily, do you think that the way to move forward from the layers of the rust disaster is to put Hannah Gutierrez in jail. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that she needs to go to jail either. I want to see the rest of the evidence. I do think she was reckless in doing her job. Do I think that she needs to go to jail to never do this again? No. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what else comes out. Um, and then we'll go from there and we'll see if she's convicted and talk about what that might be. But if the safety coordinator who's refusing to do safety meetings got six months of unsupervised probation, is it different? But we'll talk about that if she's convicted and see what y'all think about it. If they lose this case, will or can they find another prosecutor for Baldwin's trial? This is the prosecutor for Baldwin's trial. If they lose this case, it's not really super relevant to Baldwin. The action they're suing Baldwin for, though the same charge, the action is different. Carolina said this mess is not Hannah's responsibility. The prop house mess is not her responsibility. Checking each round that came from the prop house is 100% her responsibility. Jessica said, even though it's different gunpowder, doesn't mean PDQ couldn't have gotten both types. That's where I'm hung up. I understand that. Um, there's no evidence that he had any other types of rounds. So why would there be live ammo at the prop house? Well, according to this witness's testimony, because Albuquerque, that's why. Because um, that was his testimony. Sir, why does your prop house double as a landfill? <laughs> Smalls. <laughs> because it is his theft deterrent device. That is his theft deterrent device. That's why. First question, sir, what the fuck? Gabrielle, that's a very fair question. Uh, EDB number one live with 19K. We definitely were number one on live trending for a little bit today, and I'm sure we will be later. This second case is diluting the main case to me. The, a lot has diluted the main case to me, but the prosecution knows their case inside out and feels that they need to circle back on all of this. Um... Ryer true? No, that's probably not what that says, and I'm sorry if I've read it wrong. Been cleaning out my parents' house and found an airsoft gun hidden in a roasting pan that my mom had confiscated from my brother as a child. <laughs> found knives in a sweet and low box. She followed the Seth Kinney rule of firearms. I'm sorry that you're cleaning out your mom's house. However, it must have been kind of endearing to find a confiscated airsoft gun from your brother 
in a roasting pan. That is, that is, that is pretty, that is pretty magical. Morgan says, feels like they hired, um, SO cheap, new and non-union, um, for Hannah. Yes. Treated her as an intern and threw her to UTB can relate to pushing through a toxic gig because it's so important. Um, because, oh, because Seth Kenny vouched for her. Um, I'm not quite sure, but thanks. Dynamite bar equals greater than atomic bomb. I don't know what that comment meant. Um, and Jay Kathy said, wonder how long it took him to write his testimony. This has been a very, it's been very, it's not been fluid testimony. Moon Magic Mayhem said it's making more sense why Hannah and Sarah are prone to mistakes made on set. Seth is the biggest joke of them all by his own testimony. This set was a mess. Um, Kat said, I'm from Albuquerque. However, I most definitely know how to store my ammo and pew pews. <laughs> he seemed to have them just laying around everywhere. Um, wait, they have paper now at some point. Jen K said, I did asset management in college, not guns, WTAF. Uh, yeah. Um, petition to call him bubble boy distancing is real asleep on Tonto's tummy. I'm not going to call Seth, uh, Kenny names, but yes, the distancing is absolutely real. And, um, Seth is just like, it wasn't me. He's, he's going full shaggy defense. Like remember Sarah Zachary's on that too. Remember Theo did this. Remember he's going to name drop everybody but himself. Esmo said, did we all hear Seth Kenny refer to training on 1883 as team building? Do we believe he was really training? or a way to backtrack and try to legitimize their goofing around with live ammo. We've heard, I mean, we've heard from a few that they did live ammo training on that set. So I don't know. Um, Gray Hat Jen said, what I will never understand is how theaters from community to professionals and reenactors have better protocols to weapons and ammo than the film industry. It's very odd. We will see what happens um, and it might change things. Question with all those photos at his office and this testimony, could he be charged now? Elena, I'm sure a lot of people are asking this. I don't see what Seth Kinney would be charged for. I honestly don't see at this point what crime he would be charged for. Annoying testimony is not a crime um, at all. It's annoying, but it's not a crime. And if they are convinced, they can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the live ammo came from him. So I don't know what you charge him with. He didn't seem to do anything to... Um, to impede the investigation. He seemed to be very cooperative, maybe more cooperative than one would expect with law enforcement. He he has evidence that the live ammo didn't come from him. Um, there's evidence that the live ammo came from Hannah, but Hannah's not being tried for the live evidence or the live ammo coming from her. She's being tried for not checking it when it went into the gun. So I don't know what you would charge Seth Kinney with unless the live ammo came from his prop house. You can't just charge him for being disorganized. You can't charge him for his testimony being um, a word salad. So no, I don't see what we would, um, what he would be charged with or what charge would even be appropriate. But the state's theory of the case is that the live ammo came from Hannah. And if that's their theory of the case, they can't charge Seth Kinney with it. So question, did you have fun at the concert? Yes, I'm just... It's been a long few days and the desert zaps all of the, all, all of the moisture from my entire body. Um, so I'm just tired. The great big geek said, did they get into that phone call yet? Why did she toss the ammo? Nobody's asked him about it. They, they didn't ask him, what did you tell? Um, what did you tell Sarah Zachary? Because it would be hearsay. Um, and they didn't ask, did you tell Sarah Zachary to, Zachary to throw away evidence? I suppose they could ask him that, but they didn't. Um, Kimmy Cat said, I scream at your trial streams now like sports ball fans do at their games. I don't know who coined the term in the chat, but it was the Lawner chat that coined the term court casting, like sports casting, but for court. And that's exactly what we do here. It is court casting. And with that, court is at lunch. There will be a stream back for you after lunch when court resumes. They told the jury to come back at 1 p.m. local time. Um, so when court starts, our stream will start with live court coverage so we can be in the chat together. I will be in the chat with you. But for now, I've got to get to the airport and I will see you live from my house tomorrow. I will be um, screaming along with you for this cross-examination. Did I know in my soul that Seth Kinney was going to be on the stand while I was on a fucking airplane? 
Yeah, I did. Yeah, it, it seemed it seemed pretty apparent that I was not going to get away from the circumstance of Seth Kenny being on the plane well or being on the stand while I was on the airplane. So frustrating. However, tomorrow morning I will recap his testimony and I will be in the chat screaming along with you um, because I should be I should be in cell and um, in cell phone and Wi-Fi range until the end of court today. I will see you back from my uh, studio tomorrow. Lawnards, I'll be in the chat with you this afternoon. Be good to the mods, be good to each other. And, um, you know, don't make me turn the stream around. No, I'm kidding. The Lawnards are the best community on the internet. Y'all, thank you. I will see you tomorrow, but I will be I will be in the chat. And if I get real frustrated, I might, from the airport lounge, try to do audio only if I can. We'll see what happens. Bye, guys. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media. And don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a Lawnerd. Nerd.